Five, four, three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Ooch, and I am here with my man, Shippo. Thanks for joining me again today. The powers that be brought us back the way it should be, <laughs> all right? We haven't I haven't done this at an E event in, su in quite a long time, but quite we are here. Quite a long here. time. Oh, man. I know. I, I Honestly, I, I lost track of when the last time we were on together. Because usually it was always split into two, and it's usually me with someone else, and then like, I, we tag off, and you're on the, like, the other half, yeah. either the first or second yeah, half. Maybe. Exactly. But we're here now, NEC 20, on the Funky P stream. So shout-out to Funky P, shout-out to Biggie Gaming. We are here live right now with your top eight for Pokémon Tournament D. X. And first up, we got Roxo and Ash Greninja. Right, All right. into it. So this yeah. is a runback from, is it, uh, Summer Jam? I think it was. I mean, they played before again and again, and it's always happened, but it hasn't happened to big events since that Summer Jam where yeah. uh, Ash Greninja made the first major upset in his you know, career against Roxo. Roxo got the run back back. Uh, but now Ash, this is Ash Greninja post um, you know, World's win, right. our World Seniors Champion. The last possible year you can get it. Now he's in the big leagues. Right. Too old. He's getting, hey, he's getting old. He, you know, he's leading the, uh, the. He's part of the, uh, the new, the new generation, the next generation. I like to call it. They're like, he's part of like the UA High class of Pokemon tournament. Up with, uh, uh, thanks to a lot and uh, what's his name, friggin' uh, Mutator. There we go. Mutator's it's, not as young as you think, but I could still consider him a part of that though, because he was younger before. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're all younger before. <laughs> so he got the, cla the classic um, Roxo Garchomp. He has a couple other characters, but he wouldn't probably bring them up in this matchup. But the thing that um, Ash Greninja has a lot of is the kind of character repertoire under his belt. He has four characters yeah. he can play at extremely high level. Actually, five. You have both Mewtwo's. Um, you have uh, Aegislash. You have Pikachu Libre. And he, I know he has like one other completely in, his ba in the bag. But... The thing that he has over Roxo is this kind of mix of ability, but Roxo has the health and ability to make this. And we're not even a couple seconds into the game, and he's already at burst. Ash Greninja putting the pressure on right from the CA into the burst attack. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one, especially for Roxo uh, or any actual character. Uh, Shadow Mewtwo being arguably, probably no argument here, but one of the most busted characters of Pokémon Tournament. The thing is, he has a very good offense. His defensive capabilities are more in evasion than they are in uh, kind of being like, you know, beefy. Right. The character is very frail. In fact, uses his own health as a resource. So it even makes it even more frail than it already is. Yeah. You see that? Look at the exchange. He got hit by a burst attack, a CA. He had by all of this. And the health is basically almost even at this point. Only like a full, about mm. like an 80% deficit. Here comes a dive kick right up against the wall. The roller coaster combo. Roxo letting him down. Miss Drevis, what's the mix? Goes for the grab. And wow, Astro Ninja trying to escape and still getting caught with that last hit. Roxo taking the first round. And you know what's crazy? As, like you said, Astro Ninja has a slew of characters. And he's been running Shadow Mewtwo for pretty much the entire tournament, if I uh, call, recall correctly right now. He did play a bit of Pikachu Libre uh, and Aegislash Slash against Flagger. Oh, good Nine Tails call. Nice backup. He's still getting caught. I like that attempt a lot, using the um, uh, side strike to get out from the uh, nine tail situation. Ooh, but just punches out that charge of the four going on. The headbutt going forward. He's going to burst to get that situation out. Does he still have the pillar? He probably didn't want to activate it too far away. Checking the feet. There it is. That burst is going to connect. He's going to do a nice chunk of damage right now. Honestly, all of Shadow Mewtwo's attacks into like bursts like this reminds me of like Street Fighter 4 Vanilla, where every character can just sneeze into Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> sneeze into Ultra, yeah, I do remember those days. Those were fun days. Nice homing right into the dual phase. Ashton Ninja backing him off, already getting that EV, a little bit of that HP and the attack buff, and going right back into the field phase. Ashton Ninja with the pressure, making Roxo hit all the buttons, and he's going to close out this one for round number two. And again, this is the kind of like pressure that Shadow Mewtwo has, that even though they can't take a lot of hits, he can put the pressure down. He can escape out of situations, but he can't survive the hit. He's trying to bait out. Ooh, I, unfortunately, the part about... Uh, nice. Going all the way to the wall right now. Back to the center stage. He's got nine tails. Let's see, but nobody's gonna keep hitting those buttons. Roxo on the aggressive offensive. I I, I knew from seeing Roxo's position that he was gonna use nine tails offensively. Put him blocked in the corner. Are we gonna see an immediate burst? He jumps out. He's able to get a situation, but it's probably gonna. I thought he was gonna fall right into the yeah. nine tails trap, but it just uh, disappeared at last second. I thought it was supposed to last like 20 seconds in dual phase. Yeah, I, I I thought the same thing. Oh wait a minute. Oh no, it's field phase. Sorry. 
All right, we're gonna go right back to the field phase right now, charging back some of that HP. Ooh, the pillar wow, crashing out yeah. with that nice little disc. Ooh, nice grab from Roxo. Gonna switch it right back into the dual phase up against the wall. This is a bad spot for Ashford Ninja. Good stuff. Roxo, dude, that's the thing, man. He's gonna have to keep on with this aggressive play like he always does. You know, of course, like I used to say, Roxo playing this bully character. Oh, 100%. And, oh. and the fact that in that last situation, I don't know if Roxo knew to put him in some sort of frame trap or just sort of happened to be that way that Ash Greninja didn't quite recognize the end, uh, ending of that attack to not get the punish properly. Because it was way a, a lot less laggy than you thought it would be at the end. Right. Oh my goodness, this man giving him vibe checks. So you mm. can't come here, there are no good vibes. You're pressing buttons when you shoot up for homing attack. Get hit by the stone edge. Yeah, Ashker Ninja definitely switching up his uh, style of play there. You know, and that's why he's, you know, he's in the position that he is right now in top eight. Showed us time and time again how much of a great and adaptive player he is. Roxo just as adaptive right now. Oh my <laughs> goodness! That, hey, wait, is that actually gonna be that? Oh, he, nope, that is it. Oh my goodness. Roxo. That was all, th when things uh -huh. fall apart, he just completely made a mistake in, in um, uh, field phase, charging the CA when Roxo fully held the homing attack, able to completely break through, got the counter hit, and then got the crit off of the um, uh, sand tube. Right, there you go. Roxo making, taking full advantage of this momentum that he has right now. Ooh, I thought I was going to see Pizza Cutter after that, but not quite. Putting homing in the corner, this is not a good look for Roxo, because now he's pushed against the corner against Shadow Mewtwo. Pillar put on top of him. Is there going to be a miracle at point blank? There was. Good Nine Tails to back off. Nine Tails seeming to be a very good support against Shadow Mewtwo. Keep note of that, players, if you're having trouble with, against the Shadow Mewtwo matchup. That locked him into place. Do not see that ever if the Shadow Mewtwo is prepared for it, because they will, in fact, dash forward, locking that animation. Either you get hit by the Pillar and get stuffed, or you get grabbed. But he's got full synergy, so this is his moment to shine right now. Both players, full synergy bar, fully loaded. I'm expecting to see a burst at some point if the situation gets a little too sticky. Here comes Eevee, jumps over the Shadow Ball, rocks it with the full combo. He's gonna come after this kid's lunch money right now. I thought I was gonna see a reset in the corner, but Roxo wants to make sure he keeps no momentum lost at all. We're gonna see a burst. Perfect block, but Brash Greninja was prepared for it. Oh, breaks Rox the shield. <gasps> that oh, that's was, it. That, that was not a bad trade on his part, because even though that happened, Roxo is still up the round. Yeah. So now Roxo has the full meter that he needs. Roxo did not want to go ahead and waste burst, lose an exchange, and lose his burst for game three. So now Roxo has that burst for when he needs it. I mean, Shadow is going to get it anyway. But now he has it now instead of not having it at all. The risk reward here. Both players just trying to find their neutral zone right now. Astro Ninja again opening him up with the flamethrower, and this is the same position that we were in just a few moments ago. Up against the wall, Astro Ninja with the full momentum switch, bringing Roxo down to 275 already. Ooh, All right. I like what Astro Ninja was doing, but Roxo wanted none of it, and Roxo on Oh Ooh. my goodness, canceling into the stone edge, putting him again in the corner. Ooh, Ooh okay. there's the reset. Put yep. the nine tails on, force the exchange. There comes the burst. Ash Ninja gonna force burst in in response right now. Here comes the Eevee. But Roxo does have burst slightly longer than um, uh, Ash Ninja. Mm -hmm. Now that dive kick with Shadow Mewtwo, of course, covers his back as well. So really good stuff to uh, Ash Ninja right there. I being thought aware. That JY was gonna connect, and both players just essentially looking at each other very menacingly during burst and oh. knocking him down with a kick punch. Oh! oh I, what are these exchanges? Yo. Tit for tat. Yo, these dive kicks oh. right now. Oh, Ashman Ninja with the most zen-like patience. He was going to wait it out right now. Rare footage of Roxo actually getting impatient with that. Usually he just will read something, but that was just sort of expecting a button press. Ooh, the good. pizza cutter knocking right through that CA. <gasps> what a call out. Wow. What a call out. He knew. He knew. And the, but oh. Burst is not going to save him. Burst won't be able to save him. Burst won't save him. No, no he's, he's, fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. Dig, oh! get the iframes. Dig got the iframes. Dig had the iframes. Yo. Pro well, not quite iframes, but projectile invincibility frames, but specifically. But he dug underneath to outlast it. Even the burst didn't save him from that point. The better option from that point would probably have been Scythe Strike because it would have been able to kind of eat through the attack and go for it. Unfortunately, the burst just 
wouldn't have done it because of Dig. As soon as I saw the situation and the burst happened, like Rox is going for Dig, he's going to be immune to all that hit, and timer is going to go out before he's a chance to respond. I hate to see something like that happen, but man, like, that, that, is that not unfortunate? It is unfortunate, but it's probably one of the most intense knowledge checks of this game. Yeah. Because of that, one of the most recent buffs of this game, before the game, I guess, has not been patched since, yeah. that, that um, Dig has the projectile invincibility when he's going up like that. Yeah. So a lot of care, it was able to get him through a lot of projectiles. You know, he didn't really need that. But it, now he now has that <laughs> on him, and he's able to just go right through that burst like it's nothing. Yeah. Um, damn. I'm just, I'm just I'm replaying the situation in my head right now, and it's just like I feel bad for Astro Ninja because you can see the look of disappointment in his face. He was not happy about that dig of Beijing. L listen, Shippo, that was like one of those moments in an anime. When it's just like, you thought the guy was about to win in this tournament, right? And then all of a sudden, Naruto freaking Kagibunshin no Jutsu out of the ground, punches Neji right in the face. I, I, I feel it's less that and more, like, almost like like Death Note. Like, yo, you think that I'm a, <laughs> a, 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 a Kira, and Akira has, like, in his mind, like, I wanted you to think that all along. Yeah. And, like, the coming out of nowhere, like, ah, oh, here's, here's the hidden plan. Yeah, the <laughs> hidden plan. Well... No plans right now, cause you know, don't go anywhere, cause we we're going right into the next match right here. Sandman versus Oreo. Now, Sandman being, I would like to call the wild card player, not just in Pokémon, but in just about all of the games that he plays. Except, I would consider Sandman more of a Soul Calibur player than anything else. That's so, what he has is showing for. I, I say this a lot. Some people, out of context, thinks this is a, thinks this is a very rude or mean thing to say. Sandman might not be like the best of the Pokemon players, but he probably, because of his fighting game background and, and knowledge, has some of the best fundamentals I've seen in this game. Yes, like, absolutely. To the point of conditioning players to the point and then recognizing that the conditioning is happening and then reverse the situation, catch them in a situation where they take loads of damage from raw bursts, yep. from seismic toss crits, by con these conditioning that even from not knowing the character from an in-depth standpoint. Yeah. Are we, we're going right into it. I'm sorry oh, about that. Oh, and freaking Oreo with the dark cry! The oh, thing is, yes. Mewtwo Charizard is not a fun matchup to play. He'd rather make sure he keeps this in field phase. He does not want to put this into dual phase at all. And this character can definitely keep the field phase forever. You know, a kid a la Catfight and um, uh, uh, Chandler. Oh! Hashtag. Shout out to the boy Catfight, not here with us today, but here with us in spirit, of course, through this character right now. This man oh. forced dual field, a uh, forced field, the dual phase by breaking shield. I like it, but now uh, Oreo's able to get out. Uh, oh, he gets the crit off of this. It's gonna hurt. Oh man. And now he's got grabbed. He's now out of nightmare. Sandman coming down with that dive kick right into the grab. Try to be cheeky, cheeky with it. Now he does have Snivy. Here comes the Snivy. Again, Charizard out of the air. This is Oreo's opportunity to set up some kind of trap. Gets him out of the air again. Good stuff. We're going right back into the Nightmare mode. Nah. Not quite. Going back into field first. CSP. He's going to go for Lunala, getting some synergy back. And health. I forgot what it did for a while. I haven't seen it in, like, <laughs> since the first patch of DX. Yeah, man. Cresselia hasn't... We haven't seen Cresselia since uh, the Wii U days, I would say. Not too many players utilizing that support. Oreo, I think dropping the combo might have wanted to go into... So the thing is that combo doesn't work quite right because he's technically airborne. So the, the uh, forward X doesn't have that same properties of comboing into uh, the attacks that you are used to. Okay. That burst is definitely going to be a safe drop. He's going to be at one health. The one little tick's going to be in. But he's able to hit that. It's not going to be enough. That's not enough. He's going to win by time. Uh, yes. Okay. Oreo just trying to rack up the damage. I see what he was trying to do there. It's absurd to think that you that a Charizard timed out Dark Ryan won. Yeah, right? <laughs> Just That's crazy. Principle. <laughs> but again, like Sa Sandman's abilities and the um, uh, like knowledge that this character he has on fundamentals, not just like 100% on charge, but just knowing like I guess the frame data, knowing the attacks, Ooh. knowing their properties, is able to put forward, put this pressure down on Oreo, puts it into the cycle. What is this wake up situation? Going for the full dive kick, can't counter that, but Snivy's going to get him out of the situation. Three. There you go, setting up these rifts right now. Trying to catch him out of the air. Really good stuff by Oreo. Now here should be the nightmare mode. We got these bad dreams that are rising right here. Ooh, here we go. Let's see something, Oreo. Uh, we got all these deletes. Here it is. Ooh, nice. The fire punch. Ooh. 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 So oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> that reset was so clean. Ending uh. it with the clean finish. Like half for a minute. You can see Sandman's press like, ooh, I gotta watch out for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
That was beautiful. Good showing by Oreo again. Most notably for his uh, Mewtwo, or if you go back in the back in the way early times, his Sweet Coon, of course. Darkrai being a treat right now, but Sandman showing no fear, going right up to this uh, pseudo legendary or legendary, I guess, uh, right up into his face right now. Fire Punch going up this against the reset wall. Reset situation. He got put into the mix-ups. Lost three exchanges in a row. Oreo now just shy of red health in burst, throwing down the rest ram. It looks like Oreo did. I thought he did something, but he wouldn't have been able to block in time. But he's waiting. Blew all the stacks on that, but Sighty is going to knock Charizard down. Can he convert off of this into the net? Yes, he, he does! does. Oh, good grab. And now he's in burst, so he's going to go into uh, nightmare mode. Yes, sir. Good awareness from Oreo. I think Sandman let go of burst <gasps> a little too early. He should have... Uh, oh, he, he got him! He got him. The iframe's out. Very good stuff by Oreo. Will this be enough to close it out? So far, it's looking like it. Putting him into the dark void. Oh my goodness! It was because, because of the uh, the rage, that the, yes. the red health that Oreo had without the red health that um, uh, Sandman had, that he was able to sort of do that damage. Yeah, dude, that was a very st good start. Good uh, first match from both players. Sandman, of course, looking like no slouch, um, no fear against this uh, dark cry right now. And you know, Sandman, he could definitely clutch this out just like any other player would. But like Oreo if, is not playing any game. If you said, like, you know, uh, give me, like, a grappler like Charizard, and then you give me, like, a zoner like Darkrai, you'd think the matchup would go a lot different on paper, on right. principle, right. you'd think. But Sammy is using his moves to go through, like, Fire Punch to find the holes, weave in and out. This man playing Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Trying to just find the openings, but can he close it out? Yep, Oreo's game is obviously to try to try his best to keep Sandman as far away as possible, because if this... Uh, particular situation takes place unless he had that um, that support to back him up. It would have been a sticky situation. Sandman trying to go for that seismic toss early, bringing him up. Belly bump. Here comes the seismic toss. The unfortunate part of this whole situation is by nature of Oreo's play in field phase, he puts him up to a higher risk situation where if he loses the phase, oh, oh. he actually will, in fact, be put in the <gasps> corner against uh, Charizard. <gasps> that oh, the I reach! Don't, I don't know if Sandman knew that you can just grab that. That's good. Oh, yes, yeah, no! Okay, good avoid. He, he tried, but a little late on that part, he was able to go ahead and get the 8 I um, uh, anti air. Oreo making me scream out here with these uh, these uh, reset situations. I don't know. Yeah, I think, uh, you know what? I think that uh, is definitely coming into play. I'm pretty sure Oreo is pretty much trying to check him on uh, things that he might know or and might not raw, know. Raw grab puts him in. Salmon does have burst. Uh, Ivy? I, nice. He's going to combo into this, and he's going to get Nightmare. Oh, no, he's, he didn't quite get it. It's not quite in the air. Sandman has to go in the burst now, has to go for something. What is the random hit here? Oh, he tried ducking it. Uh, he tried ducking it. Uh, Oreo paid a little bit too much respect. Sandman going for the cheekiness. You, you, are, you are supposed to low stance that, but I think he <laughs> let go of the low stance just enough. Because I thought he, like, we were all talking about, like, just low stance some of him in burst. What's he going to do? He even uh, said that in the hotel room, and he still got grabbed. And here comes the flamethrower to start us off. Oh no, this, look at this damage right now. Yo, he's almost already dead. Snivy, gonna get him out of the air. Here's the setup, he needs to, wow, he, he didn't get all of it, he, 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 he was too high. Air, too high and got the air attack out. Restaurant giving him the space that he needs. Yep. Re reposition. This, this gives Oreo the space that he needs as well, though. So I like that Oreo's getting the space, but he's putting himself into the corner. Yeah. Because now, even at this situation, where do you run? You have nowhere to run. Forced to uh, activate burst, and that will do it. Sandman the, tying it up right now. The air hip check into into fire of um, uh, fire blitz. Yeah, man. If if it's up to anyone. If it's up to anyone right now, Oreo. He could definitely bring this back if he if he so chooses to. All right, here we go. Both players are ready, able, and willing to bring it back right now. Winner of this goes on to the losers' quarterfinals. See, I'm putting that pressure on, but I like what Oreo's doing with these um uh, nasty plots. Trying to go ahead and catch out uh, these attacks, get the stacks, and he's get the little. Um, uh, you know, double that he has, so whenever he does these attacks, it kind of replicates what's going through on the double. These traps being set, unfortunately, the, Too many air, hits. the air the air tech out. Ooh, wait on delayed on the flare blitz, able to catch, but again, the air tail, gonna hit, goes to the ground, nice. Oreo breaks out, but this situation... Good go anti-air. If he blocks the fire punch in field phase, um, Darkrai always has the punish with the 8Y, covers all of the options. 
Going for the oh, low. Oh, that's... I didn't... Oh, we're going to get the proper punish on this one. But in, if, if you got to get the reverse hit off the Flare Blitz on the ground, you do have a much fantastic punish. Whoa. Okay, Snivy. Oh, you're trying to go for some different stuff and still... Last uh, round out right here. So this is this is set point right here for Oreo. If he takes this round, he moves on. But we do also have a um, uh, a Sandman with burst. So don't don't right, do that. Right. That is probably scarier than Flagger with burst. I'm 100 percent honest. See all the ungas. Good punish again. Yeah, be because of the like tech like that and how you hit it, you can't get the bad dream rising hit off of that. All these rifts right now. Ooh, nice I like the dodge step. out of the way. Yes, sir. Goes for it again. Oreo, I, you know what I think? That is, I think he is trying to definitely call out a shout out to our boy Cat Fight with Field Phase forever. The he's, thing is, like, what is Charizard gonna do to you in Field Phase besides these like jump, uh, jump hits? Exactly. He got the hit. He got the hit. This is the conversion, but he's gonna keep it in Field. He doesn't want it. Yes. He doesn't see, want it. He I like want it. it. I like it, and I respect it. Why? Why try to fight a Godzilla when you could just chill? Uh oh, but it, it happened. We, oh, it happened. It yeah, happened. Dude, this What's is the mix up city here. Yo. Oreo just doesn't want this going for burst. Salmon putting down the Reshiram. He's not in Nightmare, so he can't auto burst here to get out of the situation. This is dangerous right now. Oh, man. I don't know if this is. Oh, ah, that's bad. He's that's in trouble. Bad. Oh, he's. Oh! Forward dash. Unfortunately, he did it, not give him the punish he needed. Sure, Oreo showing signs of life that's right now. Snipey. territory. Oh, my God. And he still connects. Yeah, that, that, he, that, as soon as that connects, like you can't Snipey burst Charizard in the air at all. Oh, that, that's it. That, that was 100% what he needed. But now both characters don't have burst. This is now going to be an honest match going clean in. Unless somebody has some, like, you know, whimsical cheer and got 40% As energy. long as Oreo can keep him out, he should be all right. And honestly, the field phase forever in this situation, look, why go into dual phase when you don't have to? Just keep the opponent at bay. Keep him in this phase. Keep him in your zone. Play your game. You know, you don't, just because you have a nice shiny toy waiting for you called uh, Nightmare Mode, doesn't mean you necessarily got to play with it. All like right? That, oh my goodness. And this, he gonna, he's right gonna, here. No, not quite. 15 health left, but he doesn't have the That's That's it. it. Oreo keeping this field phase forever. Got it off successfully, game three. Look, that was, that. that's what you call textbook play. He literally had the playbook ready. He said, yo, how do you defeat Charizard with Darkrai? Listen, why I have to go through all of the work, the stress, and... And, and all the extra stuff that you don't necessarily have to do. If you have the momentum, if you have all of the, all of the tools just right there, why, 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 why take the next step? You know what I'm saying? You just stay in your in your home. It, it, having nightmare mode not using like that is like having a Ferrari but just keeping it in a garage. Dude, but hey, it's, sometimes you gotta flex it. Just, I mean, yeah, just, it feels good knowing you, you, you got you it. You know you have it. Yeah. You don't need to let everyone else yeah, know you have it. Whatever. I mean, Oreo's, sure, but... Oreo's not that kind of guy, man. He's like, look, man. Look, I got the double stuff. I got the red velvet. I got the milk. Okay. Do I need to share it with y'all? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Good stuff to Oreo and good stuff to Sandman, of course. Sandman uh, falling out of the bracket, of course, right now. And our, our resident Oreo moving on into loser quarters. Now we're going to go over to our uh, winner's, winner's side. side. We got True Two and Sundula. Thanks to uh, a little... Um, uh, Mishap earlier on. We have both of these two in um, uh, winners finals on op opposite sides. Yeah. So Sundula, of course, uh, proudly wearing his first place medal. I will have to give a shout out, of course, and as I was also on commentary for that for powering his bout for the grid. So he doesn't want any extra weight on his neck or taking, shoulders. Taking the Rockley weights off. Yeah, exactly. He's he's trying to release all the shackles. Anything trying to hold him back from releasing all of his. Full potential right now playing Yo, Pokemon Tournament. There's some confusing perspective on that camera. It looks like Gulpin is like on the ground and like massive next to like the giant Gumi. Like the Gumi's really big. Like, <laughs> that's actually a yeah, giant yeah, Gumi, yeah. but Gulpin's actually really tiny. It just doesn't look like that. Absolutely. But True Two uh, has the Lucario, has the brakes in, and I don't know what he's going. He is choosing to pick. It is blocked by his face. I will tell you right now, man. True Two, he has been a player that's been growing so like in, like in an exponential way. Up over here on the winner side of this top eight for Pokémon tournament right now, so really good stuff uh, to True Two making it this far into the bracket, and now we're going oh, right he's going into right it. for breaks. Oh, so <laughs> hit him with so, the Yeet Blade. Oh, the best part about this is we all called this out earlier on. It's like you should just run around and Leaf Blade him immediately, and he did that, and so half the crowd laughed that we're all in the conversation and no. Yep. So this matchup is not the funnest matchup in the world for Breakson. She does have the tools to fight, but the thing is that she has to be very careful because. Sceptile does have the counterplay for each one of Breakson's thing, but it is sort of 
not quite rock, paper, scissors, but which option is she going for? Because the thing is that the option that can beat will lose to the other options. And that is just a punish off a grab nice. off of the whip flame charge that somehow went way off tangent. And the random, I don't say random, but the call out that he's not going to dash or do an attack from that far away. Uh, no, that was, uh, well, I, I wouldn't say that was random. That was definitely calculated. Sunduel knows his spacing with uh, Sceptile here. Going right back up and doing it again. Draining him all the way down. Almost caught him with the Yeet Blade, or Leaf Blade, excuse me. Uh, Jirachi. Ooh, and grab. Good stuff. Gonna go right into the field phase. He really needs to win this phase to get the health and synergy that he needs. If he does not win this phase, it is actually complete. Well, for the health, that's it. Like, there, there's no way he can live from losing this phase with 21 health. Yeah, tr uh, Chutsu trying to keep him back with those takoyakis real quick. But Sundula, knowing the range, and he, honestly, he was a little bit faster. Then uh, Bryson over here, all right. Oh, try to catch him with the uh, flash kick. The flash kick, however, being a projectile boomerang will eat that 100%. And the, there punish. is a situation about that when Bryson does 8x that you can beat um, uh, Sceptile in that state. You have to like forward dash and then do your J, uh, JY and you will stuff out uh, Leaf Blade. If you dash backward and do anything else, you will get crit. And he nailed it! Wow! kobe it right into it. He tries to go back X to get out of the situation. Immediately Jirachi is gonna get tries to get punished point blank. Oh no, he goes right to C. I think he's gonna press the button. Alright, good burst call to uh, maintain his positioning right now. Sundula chilling with that shield, backing off a little bit, giving True 2 the space. Not sure if this is smart, but we'll see what happens right now. True 2 just trying to make some kind of opening happen. Sundula taking the opening, whipping the grab. Oh my! We're going back and forth right now. Teeter totter. Hold up. Not no magic tricks with the Harry Potter. Uh in the air, Dula moving in, moving back, trying to plant something. Here comes Lapras. Oh, I thought he was going to see the Giga Drain hit. Gets oh. the, that's actually it. Oh no! If he had Not the flame charge cancel, he would have it. But he missed the seek the FCC. But he still gets the round win anyway. Yes. The FCC is a very tight combo to get. You see breaks into it. It is a three frame window which you can't buffer. If you buffer once at all during any part of the animation, you will not have it because it'll force it to go into the follow up of it. Ooh, nice low. Fully charged counter attack. Oh, okay. Push him away. Sundula up against the wall. Catches him. Making the combo work. Very good. Going for the optimal situation right now. What's the mix up here? Throws down the seeds. That backhand I, avoiding. Oh, wait a minute. I like the evasive here. Keeps dashing back. He's going to keep leaf blading in that situation. Gets the Giga Drain. Puts him in the corner. Doesn't quite get the hit off of the leech seed, though. Oh, good patience, good patience. Nice, not overcommitting to anything. Sundula paying their respects, giving the space, not overcommitting to anything right now. Lapras is gonna give him some time to move in. Nice counter attack, and that will do it. Sundula taking the first game in this winner's semifinals matchup right now. I don't think he's used to the Septile matchup at all, because there are, again, a couple like nuanced things to do. Like, if you 8x yeah. on shield, uh, mixing up with the forward um, uh, air dash into like JY, yep. uh, actually will stuff out a lot of things, such as. Um, it actually will stuff out Leaf Storm. It will stuff out uh, Leaf Blade. Uh, I don't know its interaction with 8Y, uh, but there is just a lot of things that it covers over. But um, he keeps going with these back dashes, and if you back dash, it's basically almost a guaranteed Leaf Blade in that situation, and also critting, getting in the setup situation. Um, but Duel also has a lot of practice against breaks, and uh, we played a lot back in the day, especially in the um, HBA days. Oh, yeah. Almost like every tournament we'd, we'd always play, so he knows like the breaks and movements, he knows the patterns, he knows that like when you're in a situation like Boomerang is like deadly oh, yeah. versus Boomerang is a hit. And it most uh, certainly shows. Definitely shows. He knows exactly the the proper uh, timing, spacing, when to punish. And he stayed breaks, and I thought he actually would um, uh, switch know, probably switch to Lucario. Yeah. Oh no, it popped right next to him, so he gets the hit. So be very careful about this because Sun Dula is waiting for us. He's moving around, hopping around, waiting for the opportunity to strike. He goes ahead with that four wide brace, but good counter attack though. Good response. Open him up. Oh, switching sides, going right back. It's called that position mission. Showing us why he won battle for the grid. It wasn't just that he's good at um, a battle for the grid. He's also good at other fighting games too. But just gets walked up, grab <laughs> through all these tracks. <laughs> All right, getting the attack buff right now and still catching him with the boomerang. Jirachi is loaded, Synergy is loaded, but that grab. And Matt, who's able to backdash and Giga Drain and still get the punish off of it, off of a crit. Here comes Jirachi into burst. Are we gonna see, J we see JA Leaf Storm? Please, 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 all right up. Oh, please, I wanna see the Leaf Storm from the JA. Switching sides, nice. Spider-Man hanging up. Spider-Verse in a few years. Hold up. 
running around field right now. Yeah, this, the, 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 the movement that Septal has is just allows him to avoid a lot of these like, crazy situations. Whoa! He tries to get the burst off, but unfortunately Lapras is a little too quick. And too big. Totally covering the, the screen for the most part. Trying to lift him off the ground right there. Sunduel backing off a little bit. Trying to catch him with that grab. Counter attack does not work. Hold on, avoiding the grab there. A lot of exchanging back and forth. Jirachi. Counter attack will work this time. Sundula capitalizing. Here comes the combo. Is this death? Not quite, but the timeout will give Sundula the round. Has the life lead. Chutu trying to com uh, maintain his composure, keep his cool. Yeah, unfortunately, Sundula is just in a situation that he's just using the movement, using uh, Chutu's movements against him. Right. He's not going for these like crazy approaches. He's letting basically Chutu make the mistakes for himself. It's one of those like plays like when you're playing these kinds of players. It's just al aggravating because you like you have no one to oh. blame but yourself. Yeah. So we're oddly enough, Sundula is not going for the uh, the leaf blades and uh, field as much. I noticed. I think he's just kind of waiting him out and trying to see exactly if he can get a punish. Right. He's trying to get to the situations where he can get, maybe he wants like more corner pressure going on. Ooh. He misses the Giga Drain, or Leaf Blade. Giga Drain, sorry. Um, and he's going to go head forward, and True 2 does get the grab punish off of that. There okay. we go. True 2 was looking for that, able to now JA or a Flame Charge right over the Leaf Blade. Ooh, whips it. But wait, Sundulo opening up with a counter attack. Nice grab on the opposite side. He's going to get a wall spot? No. Okay. So he's still up against the wall. Bullet seeds. That, that is not a fun look at all. They're very close quarters. There it is. Trutu finding that opening right now. Whiffing the grab. CADC in. Trying to close the gap right now. Jirachi into burst. He's backing Sundula all the way up to the wall. Sundula responding with a, with a burst activation of his own. Both players in and out. No burgers. Here comes the, the burst. It's not going to connect. He doesn't need it to connect. Is he far enough that he doesn't have to block it? Okay, no, he still has to block it. Okay. Yeah. Going Lapras. right for Lapras. Oh, he tried jumping out of the way. Unfortunately, that is not a good look. That is going to be so close, but Sundula able to edge it out on life on this this last bit. I thought I was going to see like a crate attack or some sort of grab. If, if he got, uh, I guess, the grab on that CA hit, um, we got to see True 2 take that round off of the grab because how much damage that was done. Right. Yeah, really good stuff. Really good showing by both players, as always. Uh, True 2, uh, pretty much in a sticky situation. But like you were saying before, I really do feel like Sundula had the advantage there because of all of the experience that he's had prior back in the HBA day. Shout out to HBA. Um, with yourself, of course, you know, being a resident Brightson player, um, as always. But, you know, as the show must continue, we got Shadow Cap versus Euclid's up next. So Euclid's being, um, I don't, I don't, excuse me, I don't exactly remember the placing of the PR that he's on, but you know, four. definitely top five, there you go, so. I think he's either, I think he's four or three. I know one is being tied. Uh -huh. So Shadow Cat, as always, guys, we're gonna see, we're gonna be treated with another Darkrai. Arguably, maybe, we, or he would go either Darkrai or breaks in. I think he might oh, actually, yeah. I think he might go breaks in this time around. Um, to deal with Aegis Slash? Well, because the thing is that I think Aegis Slash can deal with um, a Darkrai in a lot of crazy convoluted ways that Darkrai just can't handle. Mm. Okay. Like, especially because of, like, just going to shield mode and what's Darkrai going to do from full screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's... That's facts. It's real. It's very real, guys. But I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, top eight so far. Let them know on Twitter, hashtag PokemonTournamentDX. You might as well tag Pokemon while you're at it, so you know they they know that hey, we're still here. We're uh, we're doing our own, still playing. You know, we'd we'd like a sequel or something. You know, an update, a high, you know, some sugar, even even a even a balance patch. You know, something, something. It'd be nice, but hey, we're here. We're still here. We're still alive. Back in once again as always. Um, also give a follow to Funky P. Shout out to Biggie Gaming. All supporters behind Pokemon still allowing us to have such a uh, you know. An outing like this right now, a place to have and host Pokemon tournament. And in as fact, always. we have our a Sunday top eight. Uh, not a lot of games have that luxury. Exactly, exactly. So we are, we are we are very thankful, even though we're past Thanksgiving, but we don't need a holiday to uh, share and uh, embrace that thanks. So again, both players are ready and set to go right now. Shout out to the world's shortest crossover game. Look how tiny that is, <laughs> going between the two switches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is like a, a direct connect. <laughs> All right, Shadow Cat with the, the affirmative handshake right now. 
I always, I, you know what? I always think that's like a mental mix-up. Like, who actually goes for the the handshake or fist bump first? Like, and are, are you gonna get out of your seat or are you gonna stay? Seated? The best mix, the best mix-up is when you're going for like the pound and they just don't see it. And you're just holding there, like, yeah, I got, it, go for it. And they're, they're just yes. like, it, it's not that they're ignoring you. It's the fact that they're just sort of like. They're elsewhere. Waiting. Yeah, they, they, they're trying to, they're in their own zone, exactly what, what that is. All right, so characters loaded. You place Shadow Cat. Oh, Winners, are seeing here? semis. Can't tell, because we're seeing you place his side, so I can't see the character that he picked. But you, you Clay's definitely playing oh, um, Age of Slash. There, I, he, yeah. Very, very seldom will we ever see the Libre. We saw the Libre maybe like once. I heard the I heard the shing shing from the sound effects, so it's definitely easy to say. Shadow Cat going Bryson, so good call on your part. Again, just that Dark Ride just can't have, do anything about it. At least Bracing can get like support over and over again if you want to edge something out. Right. And Bracing, um, Age of Slash isn't even that bad. It's just that Bracing can't do common Bracing things against uh, Age of Slash. A lot of them being like, you know, you can't light screen Oki because Age of Slash can't in fact punish that on, on uh, Wake Up. Surprisingly. Any Be very careful about this. What's yeah. the next up here? He tries going for it. What he tries punishing it, but what we got here? The light, yeah, again, the light, the light screen to be very careful about because light screen will indeed punish it, but he's going to get the yep 2x combo off of it with the Oki situation. Ooh. So the thing is that the lay side beam is probably one of the best things that tools Brakeson has against Aegis Slash because Aegis Slash can't like King Shield or like um, parry it properly because of how it's delayed like that. You have you technically have the first action on that. So if you allow the hit to go for, first, the parry won't work right. Oh, the combo off the far fetch is going to oh, take that. Oh, man, that far fetch came in super clutch right there. Uh, you Clay is able to close it out and a little fancy with the uh, the just frame, of course. Ooh, the King's Shield. So there is a sweet spot where Brakeson can um, proc um, uh, King's Shield from going up and uh, then Boomerang exactly afterward as a punish. But it has to be a very tight, like the point that her nose is like touching the hitbox. Oh, here comes Umbreon, humbling him in place. Nice! Oh, the tick! throw, son. That was super good by Shadow Cat. That's something you see in a lot of uh, uh, other fighting games right there. I call that the check mic check. I like that a lot for what um, uh, Shadow Cat's recognizing. He's at a space that you can go ahead and con like quote, quote, put the block string into Fire Spin to lock him into the CA that's not actually punishing correctly. Ooh, the Iron Head beating out the timing of the CA. Ooh, the 8 wide knocking out the uh, aerial attack from Breaks in. But putting this pressure, we have the sharp Age of Slash. Ooh. Knowing exactly when to go forward that, that is recognizing the matchup, knowing that is the weak spot, that is the point, the full big swing off of the hit of the Fury attack. Nice. That is a combo. That's a conversion. Nice, yep. Very good by Shadowcat, man. He's showing us that, hey, Aegis Slash isn't, you know, so bad when you know exactly where to fill the holes. Ooh, moving in. Very good movement by Euclid. Just frame. Keep him safe. Shadowcat's still able to open him up right now. Here comes the Umbreon to keep him humble. Counterattack gonna get crushed. Euclid with the advantage. Nice grab going right into the dual phase gets the wall splat. He is sitting still on his attack buff again with a grab. Shimmy his way in. Now he's got the speed buff, bringing him in like he's Scorpion. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! That the tiny hop that Aegis Slash have is so disorienting. It's like it's like a tiny little micro hop, and you just come down and like grab with like the power of the heavens. Yeah. He was only at like ten health, but still. So you is going for the first win right here. First matchup during this set. Are we going to go back to the character selection screen? And we are. Now I'm trying to... Supporto sento no enden, eh? So we're ready at the support. So... It looks like Euclid did nothing different. I think Shadow Cat is trying to either use this as like a time to sort of... Yes. ...gather himself, or yes. maybe he's thinking of switching to Dark Ride. Hey, this is... Yeah, probably uh, thinking about it. However, sometimes, like you said, um, and I emphasize this a lot, you definitely got to take up and utilize the time that you have at, to your advantage to kind of slow down the flow of momentum because you don't want to, you know, let your opponent just kind of, you don't want to jump right into it and then they're still hot, you know what I'm saying? You want to let them cool off a little bit, you know, just like this hot chocolate I got to my right over here. Okay. Is it still warm or is it kind of cold now? No, it's cold now. Yeah. Cold chocolate. It, it's not, it's not hot no oh, more. Oh, to be fair, cold chocolate is just chocolate milk. Oh, yes. That's good. That's 
He's smart. <laughs> He's so smart. <laughs> That's the Gumi carrying on him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gooby, as he calls it. Right, so we got, the same, we got the same, but now we got Ms. Magius instead of going for uh, Umbreon. So, kind of give a little bit of insight of in. It's kind of an eye in the chat a little bit. So, during the attack where the light screen came out, you can also get a grab too in that situation if you have the 11 frame grab. Right. You can also get that done. Uh, it doesn't have to be light screen. Light screen just gets the crit and a bit more for breaks in. Ooh, I, I don't know, but I don't agree with that punish because you do get the four. You do get the guaranteed four wide punish off of light screen. Oh wow! Okay, triggering the, triggering the activation from uh, Aegis Slash and Shadow Cat able to punish it uh, uh, correctly. But right now, both players uh, trying to get each other to back off. Shadow Cat bringing them in. Miss Magis hit now. What's the mix up here? He's gonna have to hold all of this now. Electrode, interesting. Backing him off completely. Did not actually. I didn't even notice that you played switch. It's, off it's not. It's, it's not. It's the same support set. Yeah. Both Electrode, yeah, but we no, didn't notice right. that he switched off of the dark patch. Right, right. Yeah, Electro haven't seen that uh, support in a very long time, actually. Electro used, uh, used to be used for uh, matchups against characters like Suicune. That's unfortunate. Only with two health left. Would he be able to make this comeback? Miss Man just coming in, saving the day. And he's going to hold all this chip right now. Watch the space. Here goes that burst. Is he holding shield? He is. Still safe. Going for the iron head. Be very careful, but Shadowcat does have the life lead. Ooh. Oh, and that's the little tick reset into grab. Living from this two health survival. And you play sitting on match point right now. All he needs is his next round, of course, to advance, to go off and face Sundula, who's sitting, waiting patiently in winner's finals. Okay. Nice. Homing attack. Fully charging and committing to that. My man put a ring on that homing attack. Nice going in. The, no wall splat, but he does get the wall advantage right now. This is a very bad spot to be in. Jumps over and gets the crit grab. Good stuff to Shadow Cat. Now switching position, putting closer to the wall. UK is getting right out of there, though. I don't know, Ship, though. This is looking uh, like it could be anyone's match right now. 100%, because Shadow Cat still has the support sets that he has. He still has burst on deck, so he's able to contest with what he wants. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, CDC in. Far fetch is here. Light screen to back off. Good grab attempt. Oh, <laughs> the dash in. Who thought he's gonna press the button? Just goes for the grab anyway. Gave him a good idea. He said, "Let's try this." No, he's gonna go for the Oki setup. Goes for another grab. <clears throat> All right, backing him off right now. Trying to get that chip in. Here comes Far fetch to give him some leeway to move in with the iron head and gets it. Nice setup situation, forcing Shadow Cat to pop burst. Oh, the aerial Ooh. hit! Unfortunately, to hit low on the wall. Oh no! He's gonna be very careful with the situation. Or you just oh, Miss Magic is breaking it. That's a that was a hundred percent of a burst situation. Oh <laughs> my goodness! I like the attempt wow. from you, Place. I like it because that blocks a lot of options. But unfortunately, the patience from Shadow Cat and the slight misspacing allowed him to punish at first like that. Yeah, I feel like Euclid was uh, getting a little too antsy. He just wanted to kind of get that round over with and, and move on to Sundula. But of course, that did not pay he off was, for him. Because he was still in a situation where he would, did have a bit of the health deficit. Nine Tails moving right in. Shadow Cat racking up his damage right now. Really good stuff. Punishing when necessary. Euclid trying to find his way in. Oh. I, I don't know if a Shadow Cat knows he can just kind of side home and get out of the situation almost guaranteed. Oh, jumps right over and still gets, connects it right down. Here he goes. Nice correct grab. He's going to do a nice chunk of damage here, bringing him down to 45. Oh, and King Shield. Back off. You have to be perfect about that. Iron Head. Oh, man. Euclid is hitting all these buttons right now. Has far fetch. Shadow Cat as well, having nine tails as well. Let's see what oh, they make of this situation right now. We got the Sierra Mist on the field. Oh man, well, oh, this is gonna. That's, yeah. gonna be a that's gonna be a burst. That's gonna be a burst. up if I see in any. Far fetch immediately. Unfortunately, he's caught this situation. Ooh, Waiting for nine, nine tails. tails getting out, but he's probably gonna ahead and put him in burst to lock him down. But now he can just outlast in this situation. Yo, trying to trying to be, watch that very, shield. Be very careful. Ooh, okay, good, good patience. He's gonna block this. 
Now what's what's what comes next? The that grab! Is... Gotta no! try to go for the grab. The thing is that Shadow Cat, if Shadow Cat recognized that when he was charging up Iron Head, he could have hit Burst almost immediately and caught all those situations out of that and even ticked the end even if he went into like Shield Stop. Right. So Shadow Cat, so this, of course this is, this is the winner's side, so just so that you guys are aware. This is not the last time we have seen Shadow Cat, so Shadow Cat are going to uh, be going right down to face Oreo once we get around to that matchup. So oh, fun. I be yeah, so I now we have Ro Roxo versus True, True. Two. That is a match we see almost every week at uh, NCB. NCB, that's right. And Roxo usually edges out on that one, so this is, uh, you know, we're in top five right now. Yep, so... Of course, the favorite in this matchup, you know, no bias, of well, course. Probably top six. Probably going to go have to go with Roxo on this one, but you never know. Like I've been saying, True 2 has literally leveled up exponentially over the years, especially within 2019. He's definitely been showing up to a lot of locals and monthlies and whatnot, and he's really been putting himself on the map. So if, if this is the time for a new bloom within True 2. Who knows? This would definitely put Roxo uh, in the salt zone, I would, I would imagine, after if uh, True 2 can clutch this victory out. But we'll see what happens. But like I said, True 2 versus Roxo right now. Up next, we're going to have Shadow Cat versus Oreo. And then we're going to go right back up to the winner's finals with Sundula versus Euclace. And that will be a 3 out of 5. I don't know if True, will True 2 stay in the breaks, so do you think he'll try the Lucario out this time around? Well, the thing is, since like it's 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 a weird situation because like we said, they're they're very familiar with each other. They know the characters that that they play, and I feel like whoever True goes with, Roxo will have an answer. Um, I think the biggest mix-up would be if Roxo played a different character. Oh, like play, playing like Scizor? Or Shandy. Well, Scizor does be Brakesons, but we got the Brakeson matchup here. We're going for Mimikyu. Taking a picture out of that page out of my book here. Yeah, Mimikyu is a very good support. I don't think so in this matchup. We'll definitely see right now. Roxo, oh, whiffing that, but that's okay. Still has the uh, advantage right now with the spacing. True 2 having an opening right now, backing up a putt. You gotta be very it's careful about that. That, that anti-air drill can just knock out flame charge like it's nothing. Ooh, the and great again, grab. Roxo has so much experience breaks in by playing me for all of these years that it's essentially like clockwork what's gonna happen. But Juju does play a different kind of breaks in, so we'll see if that kind of adaptation will be towards his detriment. Nice. Backing them off right now. Juju able to get his attack buff. Now Roxo does have Miss Magius. Pizza cutter, good stuff. Opening him up. Here comes Miss Magis. Now, what's the mix? Oh, jumps away. That's a very good getaway situation that yeah. True 2 did 100%. Not quite in the wall. Going for the 5x because that is so much guaranteed damage if you got that. Going for Mimikyu immediately. Jumping away and dive kicking. Completely avoiding Mimikyu. He was not afraid by that that uh, that uh ghost type Pokemon. Mimikyu is great. It does have his uh, fair share of exploits that you can get out of like jumping out forward like that. Can sort of get into that situation. I don't know if he won to the in situation because Golf Swing would have won him at the exchange 100% because uh, Golf Swing is indeed a, a normal attack and not a projectile in that sense. Oh, good avoid with the dig. Roxo coming straight from underground. Oh, but good counter attack with True 2. Good answer. Good, good, good. Get some damage right now. All right. Keeping him away with the Takoyakis. The fire spin gets. Oh, wait he a minute. He tried Again. with the flamethrower, but unfortunately, it does in fact lose the full dig. This stuff, Mimikyu not getting all the damage, but again, giving True 2 the uh, upper hand and the momentum right now. We got the wall, we got... Ooh. Oh, he goes right for the light screen, getting the counter hit off that. Putting him against the other side of the wall. We got the block away here. He commits to the dig, hits that out. He got us ahead and flame charges way out of the situation. Rox putting his pressure on. The dig is going through. Here oh, but Roxo now has Nine Tails on deck too. But it doesn't matter because this is death. Oh no! No, it's not! I like. I like. Okay, Nine Tails to keep him humble up against the corner. What's the mix? He goes for the grab. Good coverage! Man, that was that was veteran. Roxo knew exactly that if he went for the grab that he's all he needs is one tap. Doesn't need even one damage, even a thousand damage. He would have done the same amount. Just one little love tap is all you need. Oh man, that was that was pure like that was pure I, calculation. I love that like how Nine Tails is used both all like defensively as like a get off me tool and then offensively as like here's this wall. Like imagine like in Marvel's Cabinet Infinite, like the space stone. Yeah. But now it has like a hitbox. 
Dude, Roxo called 1 800 Nine Tails, had the insurance policy on deck, and it showed. He had all of his options covered, and that was like the best situation, you know, that he could have put himself in. So unfortunate for True 2, but True 2, again, not. Uh, not, not you know, out of this completely right now. And here comes the ditto. Oh my God! It, it, okay, so if he went, uh, I know he sometimes goes toga his um, uh, guard chomp, but he's going uh, Sylveon. Sylveon to sort of win the. If he thinks that the match is 50-50, if he gets the extra health, it sort of matters. Ooh, right, stone edge. We get hammer, hammer head. Ooh, just goes right for the jump drill. Can't doesn't get the pick up here. But gets the drill again, and dig. Wow, so it's, it's literally even right now. Oh wow. Battle of the Hammerheads goes for the damage, bringing him to 253 right now. Here comes Sylveon with that defense increase. Good patience, or the delay, I should say. Counterattack. So the best thing I see about um, uh, Garchomp Mirrors, you ever see it, is like activating this, the charge attack or the CA into the Dragon Claw, into the CA, into the Dragon Claw, back and forth, over and over. Is the most fantastic thing to watch, and I really hope you see it. All right, Miss Magis is out on the field now. The slow approach. What's he gonna do? Brings him out of that underground state. Not afraid. Roxo showing what's up with this bully character. What's a bully to a bully? Ooh, the grab is that might actually be it. There we go. Release the drill. Yeah, this is looking pretty convincingly in Roxo's favor right now. Choo Choo trying to test the waters in if his Garchomp can match up. Right now it's looking pretty pretty shaky. True 2 with the first hit, trying to move in with the pocket sand. Good counterattack and getting, opening him up. Roxo right now moving in. Here comes Ninetales to back him off. Ooh, the jump JY reminds me reminiscent of all the Tree Fighter 2 jump ins where they come in so meaty. But then he just gets, dashes back but waits and gets hit by the sand tube, putting him in the corner. True 2 with burst on Zach. Roxo not. Roxo goes and tries to take out the grab. He does in fact get that, but now he's in the corner himself. Gets hit by Rodro, putting him up against the wall. Oh man, what a risky him. That was risky because he activated that while Roxo was charging Sand Tomb. Yeah, the grab. True 2 with the advantage right now. This is looking kind of in True 2's favor. All right, Pocket Sand. Roxo getting a little bit of health back, going into the dual phase right now. True 2 is now taking all this damage. This is dangerous. Going for the full roller coaster ride right now. Sending out the boomerangs. Here comes Sylveon for that defense boost. That's something that Truthu definitely needs if he does not want to uh, take this damage. Right now, Truthu, he could definitely win this round if he gets oh. the right reads, and I think that's it. Yep, he's going to get it. He had Nine Tails on deck, and he didn't use it. Wow. I think he was waiting for him to waste for burst, but still use the Nine Tails in that situation. You could have actually won that exchange entirely or forced him to, you know, blow the burst on round two, and you had it for round three, because now you still have Nine Tails this round. Ooh, good pizza cutter avoiding that grab right now. Roxo definitely is gonna, I feel like he's gonna play a little bit more aggressive. Normally in situations like this where he's like, alright, he's gonna he's, he's not here to play. <clears throat> you see you see the faster motion. Both both characters, both players are going back and forth right now, trying to get something to work. Nine tails. Oh, that's gonna hit a bunch, knock him out of the stone edge. You get the combo, getting hit for the dragon club, putting him on the wall, gonna hit for one, and to the jump drill. Look at that. Half health from that exchange. Good call out by Roxo. Oh my. Stone Edge right into a dual phase right now. Backing off, baiting out the Stone Edge response from True 2. And he's, yo, he was trying to get that red armor going. What is that? What is that? Uh, the, the shed skin? Rough skin. Rough skin. Okay. Got the got my skins mixed up. Excuse me. We should get dry skin. This man using Nivea. <laughs> All right. Oh, True 2 whiffing it, but it gets it this time. Gets the piece. Got to finish your dinner plate. Oh! That is dead. That's it. That's it. That's it. He can just go and put him on the wall again. And that's going to go right in the burst. Yo, did we see oh, this happening? He burst. He don't Look need it. This all happened because Roxo did not use Nine Tails round two. This uh, was all because that one exchange. Dude, man. This like, the, the resource management in Pokken is absolutely absurd. Yeah. But forcing your opponent to blow burst round two. Is that so that you have a round three is so invaluable that it caused that exchange that we saw. We saw every decision made because of that one exchange of meter. Dude, let me tell you something, man. Roxo, he cannot play with his food. He's got to finish it. You know this man of food. He ain't playing with anything. Nah, but you saw his <laughs> reaction on, on the camera. He was like, you see this? <laughs> <laughs> 
This is what I gotta deal with. You gotta play, you play like the, um, uh, uh, it's always sunny music going on. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, good grab. Yep. Again, gotta be super aggressive right now. He has to show the dominance right now. When you're playing a bully character against oh, another bully. jumping out, gets hit, caught in the air, bounced down, but he's getting put in pressure on the wall. Is Roxo losing steam after that one incident? Is that Dude. one thing just going and biting him back, that haunting his nightmares? Light. But the jump drill knocking out that one decision of True 2, creating the reversal situation. Like I was trying to say, man, when it comes down to these types of matchups, it's who can flex their <gasps> chest bigger. And right now, True 2 is looking like he is no slouch, not afraid. Roxo uh, sending out Miss Magis. Here comes the grab, and that's going to close this one out. Yeah, that was a very dangerous situation because um, if Rusu jumped, Roxo could also catch him again. You can sort of get this kind of jump back scenario or even just like the overhead, which will kind of bring you back down to Earth, back to reality. Up there goes gravity. So ooh, putting, ooh, ooh, putting it down. Shiva with the bars <laughs> right now. Let's go. We got to call that out really quick. <laughs> putting the stone edge down, putting the nine tails, forcing him back into his side of the stage. Looking, loving this pressure, locking it down, creating this little wall. Ooh. And that dive, dive kick, kick, one of the best dive kicks in, not only in Pokemon, but in like fighting games, 100%. Oh, yeah, this dive back. kick stalls you in the air just enough, gets a bounce, gets a full combo. If it's air to air, it's a ground bounce. It is absurd, has absurd priority, and will track you down to the ends of the earth. There's not one thing that's like, dive kick doesn't do besides counter pierce. It might as well at this point, <laughs> to be 100% honest. Nice crit. Gonna open him up. Now Sylveon not not activated, so he got all that damage this time around before Sylveon doing their job, completely saving the damage. But Roxo trying to close up, close this match in right now. True 2 forced to activate first. Dive and again, kick. I told you this dive kick is absurd. It just doesn't care about your priority. It just doesn't care. But Roxo now has nine tails on deck too. So if he's put into a bad situation in the corner, he can legit nine tails. You have 20 seconds left on the clock. Sylveon activated True 2, trying to stay alive right now. And now he, he, just, he just hides behind it. He doesn't need to. He just hides. Grab. He just hides. Oh, that's it. He just hides. But unfortunately, oh, what? with one. Oh, no, Rock. So I don't know. True 2 can still make this comeback. I'm not even in the front. Dude. All right, just okay. gets hit. <laughs> okay, just gets hit. All right. Somewhat of an anticlimactic finish, but True 2 really showing up here, making a good showing. I would not be... Um, by any means upset at, at in the slightest, you know, taking a loss to Roxo is, you know. That's that's you know, that's a respectable loss. Exactly. But even exactly. then it happens almost on a weekly basis to the point that like it's almost, it's like, it just feels like another day of the job. You know, you're, you're, <laughs> another you're, day in the office. You're 9 to 5, same, same thing, different day. Right, right. So anyways, but again. Good, good stuff to True 2, and also, as, as always, good stuff to our boy Roxo. Moving on to the loser semifinals right now, and I believe we're going to go over, right, like I said before, Shadow Cat versus Oreo um, for our other side of the loser quarters. So I'm uh, pretty much anticipating we'll see a Darkrai versus Mewtwo matchup. Uh, we, well, okay, so here, here's the problem in what we got. Okay. If uh, Oreo goes Mewtwo, Shadow Cat wants to probably go Darkrai. But thing is that Oreo may go dark right himself, and we may see Shadow Cat go to breaks it. So this is a very kind of double blind pick here. Like the first pick actually matters because they will in fact oh, yeah. counter pick each other. Yeah. Like this is gonna be right. one of those matches where like you'll see different character every round if something does not go the right way in the first decision. Now, now here's here's a mix up, and it's probably not gonna happen. But like, what if what if Oreo goes sweet Searching. That's a food for thought, guys. That is that is some good food for thought. That like, is. That, yeah. that, that, now I want some like lunch with that food for thought. Yeah. <laughs> guys, so let, let's peep at what Oreo's doing because we can see his screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to look right now. Me too. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just right, not a skipped beat. Just so, right for it. Sorry, sorry to kill the momentum and the hype for you guys in the chat right now, but. uh. Oh, not yet. Not yet. No. Are we allowed to? Once the event's done. That's like the that's the rule. Uh, okay. Yeah. Shout out to Red Bull, guys, by the way. <laughs> Sponsor. Try to see if I can come for Red Bull, but I guess that's a uh, just for display only. <laughs> yeah, for for the display for the stream, the, the the general rule for events is like once once the event's done, you can go in the fridge. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so here we go, guys. We're going right into this, and this is a Mewtwo versus Darkrai matchup. So correct call on my part. Found it. Mm. NB Dizzle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Called it, right? That's right. All right, so here we go. 
going right into this. Shadow Cat, arguably what one of the best Dark Cries, if not the best Dark Cry in uh, NA. Hey, that that title he kind of was like uh, uncontested Jin, but now he got both him and Jamin out. Uh, both these players, fantastic Dark Cries. But Shadow Cat, for the longest time, was like an online only player. And only until recently was able to throw Ooh. this out. Into the net. Let's go. I like seeing some stuff you don't oh, see you too much. Yo, <laughs> Did you just miss the double, <laughs> the double pulse combo? Oh, oh my yes. god. We got a clinic out here, man. I like it. Double Shadow Ball. Oh, yeah. That is Shadow Ball, right? Yes. Okay. It's got to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, staying. I like that. Staying right near his trap. Oh, wait, no. Dark Pulse. It's part, I forgot they're the same move. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Just dash it. Yo, the dashing through in whatever fighting game you're in, if you can dash through somebody, it's always disorienting. Oh, yeah. Like, if Blanc on Street Fighter 4 can jump over you when you're like down, you just go through it, and you're like, you, you get mixed up, even though it's just back and forth over you. Right. Same thing with Dark Ray, he just teleports and phases through you. You think if someone dashes in your face, they stay forward, but you gotta remember, like, other way, like, you can't really get crossed up in Pokémon in terms of blocking. Wow. But you get crossed up in terms of your attack. So if like, your, your quick attack is back something or forward something, it will get crossed up. Fully committed to that Mimikyu. Wow, oh, keeping him up in the air right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yes! I love it. I love. I think Oreo wanted to be like a firefighter when he grew up, or like you know maybe a doctor. But those dreams have been eaten at this point. Oh yeah, they're they're gone. Oh like, yeah. Oh, you you have now hit reality and like oh what am I doing with my degree? What's happening? Should oh we, no, student loan debt. What's happening? <laughs> Shiba, you deserve all the cookies for that for those puns. <laughs> all of them. That was that was amazing. Go right into bad dreams rising. Putting him in this situation. Toga Kiss gonna allow Oreo the movement that he needs to get in and out, weaving in and out of these attacks. These traps are gonna be set, <gasps> but getting hit by that. Oh, and oh. look at the JY, but not quite the combo off with the classic Oreo JY to grab. <laughs> nice, bringing it down, tripping him up. Oh, but whiffs that last part. Didn't have the right spacing, but he's gonna get another chance. Gets the wall splat though, has that damage. Shoutcat now to 203. Bringing it all the way down to 131, up against the wall. This is not a good spot for Shadow Cat. Oreo with the offensive right now. He has all the momentum. Oh my, I, I oh. really hope, even though I, it didn't, I really hoped it would have caught. Like just, yeah. just for like how good it is at catching the, oh my goodness, jumps out of the situation over the Dark Pulse. <laughs> I, I, I always get mixed up with Dark Rise moves so much. He's got but a lot of dark darkness. Dark, for the longest time, I was like, why isn't this character Ghost? Oh, he's just dark. You might as well just be like dark move number one, number two, you know? All right, here it goes. Setting the trap right now. Going around the I, trap. I love that he's just using the trap like some sort of roundabout, like it's the statue in the middle. Yes, you got to. Yeah, <laughs> this man. man said, yo, I'm going to turn right lane only. Let's go. Keeping him at bay right now. Oreo almost catching with that side wide. Here's Togekiss. Now he's gonna have a little bit of a Ore speed advantage. So Oreo's now doing the exact opposite situation he was doing with Salmon. Before now he was like trying to corner Salmon, keep field face forever, My. being pushed into the corner. But now he's doing the same thing and taking notes from Sandman of leading in and out of that situation. That two Y hit on the reset, do you think what he's going for? Catches him in the air. This is gonna be a full face of conversion if he gets that. It is. Not full, but you know, what he did with the points he had. Shadow Cat backed up against the wall right now. Arguably both players up against uh, a wall. They're right, they're right near it in this oval shaped stage right now. Shadow Cat activating burst. Oh, Trying to mix up. Ooh, good grab. I thought he was in a circle with uh, this mode. Oh, set, set. Oh, now we got the burst. We got the Mewtwo himself. We're gonna get the single one punch on this one. If he gets to get it off, but I don't think we are. He's going for this pressure. What are we doing in the corner? You gotta be very careful in this situation. Okay, I like that. Using that JX to set up those rifts on the ground. Ooh, trying to swat him out of the air. He doesn't need to approach. Look at that health. You just, can yeah, just hold that shield. Yeah. Oreo taking ground one against Shadow Cat. Yo, you know what? That's great awareness. I, I, I didn't even peep the yeah, time. I, I was really wondering, like, why isn't Oreo going with this burst? And I realized, look at the clock. I think Oreo realized that Shadow Cat doesn't realize the clock. Right. He's like, I'm not going to make him realize it. I'm just going to. Hold back, Dude. relax. I got my nice drink. We got on the beach. We're gonna relax. We're gonna have a nice day. And oh, look at the time. <laughs> Dude, honestly, that is that is kind of what can make and make or break a match because that's something a player always has to be aware of. They have to. Not only are they watching out for what their opponent has to do, they're watching out for the life bar. They're watching out for the time. And if you slip up and you don't even oh and they, uh oh, don't forget the buffs. 
you know, and the, and the debuffs. There's so many things on the screen that are going on at once that you got to keep track of, and time is so important. And it, 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 and it gives us, like, a confusing thing to call because we're like, dude, like, why isn't he doing this? But it's exactly that. Oreo had his eye on the clock the entire time, so good stuff to Oreo, showing us that he's still in the game. So 100%, um, I'm loving like the kind of pressure that uh, Oreo's putting on, not allowing him. Because Oreo also does play Darkrai, so he knows the traps, he knows the holes. Right. Um, are we going to see the Darkrai again? Are we going to see the... I, I mean, the breaks and switch might be a little um, ballsy. And it is! He's going for it. He goes right for it. He's going for Togekiss, which is a very good um, uh, support for this kind of matchup. Because the thing is, especially when Oreo uses Togekiss um, with you 2 you really need to contest back with this because Brakeson is kind of locked down. So she also gets the Togekiss down. She can maintain the speed pressure along with Mewtwo. But Mewtwo, he's going to go ahead down, put the fire spin down, put the CA on, put the pressure. What do we got here? There's a vintage situation. Tries to go for the grab, breaks it out, side Y into side beam, putting this out, putting the Togekiss down. He's going to go back off. He is not. He goes right for the 2Y, but not quite a crit. Yeah. Shadow Cat trying to switch positions, but Oreo again, too quick for us to call right now putting him right back to where they were before in the field phase. Shadowcat forcing the activate first. Counter attack going into the full combo, setting up the fire spin, making him hold that block. That was block. some fantastic chip on his part. Realizing that he's not going to go ahead for these combos, doesn't want to put the pressure on, but right. in fact put the chip damage where he needs to be. Because now this puts um, uh, Shadowcat in the health lead over Oreo. Now Oreo has to keep this up. And look at that health difference and the fact that, look at the Togekiss, only halfway done. Shadowcat now hits his Togekiss, Togekiss on deck. He's now going to use his field phase to now get the attack buff, the speed buff that he has, and get that Togekiss back. But 14 seconds on the clock, and now Oreo's probably going to get Togekiss the last five seconds of the game. Yeah, he had his shield down as well. He's in the, in the red zone, that danger zone right now, forcing him to make an action. Shadowcat... Uh, making the best of that, capitalizing off of it, and getting the round. Here comes Mewtwo with the homing attack. Oreo's with the, on the offense right now. He's trying to make something happen. He does not want Shadowcat to get any kind of momentum. He's going to be very careful about these side wise because if Mewtwo does go with a forward while it happens, it will be all those and he won't be able to get that situation. But now he's in the corner, and the thing is, Shadowcat recognizing how to do the CAs against the JY, because of the ability for um, uh, Mewtwo to go ahead and get the X afterward, you have to kind of get the situation preemptively going for it, you can't CA that. But Oreo knowing the spacing of Boomerang is probably the biggest practice he's done with me, knowing that after the Boomerang you can go ahead and punish with Mewtwo 6X and get the combo off of it. Oreo doing a really good job right now, this might actually close it out. Not quite, not quite, you got one mix up here, nice. tries to go low, but Oreo goes high. That was a very good mix-up right now. Doing that low stance to make him think that he was just going to have a low move ready. But he said, yeet, handed him the card, and he said, I'm going high, dude. But yeah, like, again, Oreo's with Punish with 6X on Boomerang is literally something that's been practiced and not worked for years with uh, breaks in. <laughs> uh. Shadowcat bringing him in. Oreo. Knowing exactly how to punish that boomerang, yep. but realizing that he's not going out, going for CA, and this is going to go for 5XX. That is an Oki situation, going for token kiss. What's the mix up here? Pushing him away from the corner. Uh, okay. Shadowcat now creating the space right now. He doesn't want anything to do with Oreo. Oreo has, wants everything to do with Shadowcat. Trying to back him up into the, into the wall. Shadowcat still trying to play this spacing game. Also, shoutouts to Breakson's new J8Y, able to contest that JY in the air from, from U2. I actually didn't know the interaction. I thought U2 won that 100% uncontested. That is not going to be a crit, but it is going to be a full conversion. Ooh, okay. Pressuring on the shield. U2 respecting Shadowcat's space right now. He does have the burst versus uh, Null and Void. Ooh, the pack X knocking him out of the situation, putting him forward to get that crit. But the token is movement. Go to go ahead and give Oreo taste his own medicine. Oreo put him against the corner. This is literally match point. Set point for Oreo. Uh, this that got the just frame too. Knew the spacing wasn't oh gonna be good. enough. Oh my chased him down. What's the mix up here? Waited for him. We're gonna pull back and Oreo with the health, with the health lead. Gonna go ahead and as long as you want. Win that focus one. Oh my wow. goodness! But not quite a conversion here. And Damn. oh my god! That call with the focus blast to negate the projectile into boomerang the fall is exactly the kind of knowledge that you need in this game. Because yeah. most people would have light screened the explosion, but not the ball. If the ball never hits the ground, it'll never explode.
fast. And he went ahead, able to call it out. No multi-hits here, so it's not forcing None. the animation. Right. And Boomerang the hit, caught the landing, forced him on the ground, gave him the exact time he needed. It was just out of range of that 6x. He can just hold the block. Great awareness by Shadowcat, man. That is, that is a player that knows his stuff. Just to put it bluntly, no character switches, no support switches. We're not playing no games, no fancy stuff. We're going right back into it. Oreo, obviously sticking with Mewtwo. Because you know what? Like that last match, it could have been anyone's game. So the, the match was not indicative it. of like this was a matchup problem. This wasn't a support problem. It was just like uh, a couple of interactions here and there. Exactly. Good counterattack. Not getting anything extra. Has Toga Kiss. Oh, chased <laughs> him down with the JY. You can't commit with back, back X against uh, Mewtwo because one of his most common wake up shenanigans is, in fact, um, you know, jump forward JRX. Ooh, in and out, but oh, Oreo with the burgers. Only breaks. He breaks with the swords. Okay, backing off. Gets Toga Kiss now. That speed buff. Trying to catch him. Oh, oh my goodness, Oreo with the movement here, but now, oh my, jeez, uh, the damage. Oreo put his pressure on Shadow Cat. Oreo on set point, putting Shadow Cat out of the tournament, if that's the case, but Shadow Cat has to win two to make it back, but Shadow Cat does have burst and token kiss on deck. Dude, if we, if, if Oreo advances, you realize we're gonna see an HBA classic run back right now with Oreo versus Rock, so. This is, or this is out of practice Oreo too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then you know what's crazy? The only reason why Oreo's in this loser's position is, is because, because of Sunny, Sunny Deluxe. Sunny is the one who knocked Sunny. Another breaks it, knocked him yeah. into losers. I feel like after losing to Sunny, he's like, I'm never losing to a breaks ever again. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see if Shadow Cat can break that, or if he can uh, maintain that curse that might be bestowed upon Oreo's head right now. Oh, that the fifth place. Well, the, the, the fifth, not even the fifth place first, but this new breaks in curse now. Well, it was always the fifth place. It was like at CEO oh. at the same time right before the qualifiers. Oh, no. Oh, no. He just goes right into the fire blast, gets the hard knockdown, dashes out of the situation. And, oh, the punish with the 6x gets the pick up here. We're getting the full conversion. Oh, not quite. But made him, boy, but made him blast the burst. And Sha Shadowcat does not. Oh, my goodness. This is a full combo. Going to put him on the wall. Nice. And that wall splat going across the entire stage here to the other side of the wall. This is, oh, okay. Two, two I burst. Wants him to back off. We do have 10 seconds left on the clock right now. This is literally any player's game. Oreo with the wall advantage. Switching it up that with Shadow Cat. That is going to be enough. This is, this is probably going to be a combo that goes long enough. Or it does enough damage. Two seconds on the clock. One He's second. got it. She, Oreo takes it over Shadow Cat. Everyone, the crowd standing up. Giving a, a standing ovation to Oreo. Oreo doing a really great job. Again, like you said, he's never losing to a Bryson again. <laughs> Getting scarred from Sunny Day, like never happening. Oh, man. That was a great showing by Shadow Cat. Really good stuff. Got to see I, the Bryson. I Bryxton. apologize for any you know loud ear noises from that yell, but like that—that that is, that, you know, I don't know if any of you guys realize how big of an upset that actually is. If uh, Oreo, Oreo lost? Oreo, no, Oreo beating Channel oh. Cat. Oh, well, yeah, because Oreo's been out of the game for quite some Oreo's time. Oreo's been out of the game. I mean, kind of biased. Oreo's my boy. Uh, but, you know, Shadow Cat, oh, my character boy. But it's <laughs> like Shadow Cat's like a top player in, in NA. Oreo's always been just shy of that. Not able to get yeah. that like nice breakup. But that win on Shadow Cat is exactly when you need to break out of that. Like Oreo's always been seen as like a top, like just shy of like super top player. Right. And this proves that he's just in that league. Right. All right, so we got some sponsors to shout out. So, of course, Dynamic Custom B-Works. You're pretty much going to see them at every major possible. And, of course, Biggie Gaming and Funky P for streaming, allowing us to uh, be on here with Pokémon Tournament DX, man. So, yeah, dude, guys, Pokémon is such a, great, it's such, a, it's such a great game. Still such an amazing game, such a fun game. And, uh, you know, I feel like we, 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 we're still... We're still in our toddler phase, man. We're like, what, three years old on console? To be fair, we've actually lasted in tournaments longer than most other games, if you really think about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean. Like, every other game yeah. has been, like, power crept? But, like, more like the next new shiny thing comes out. But we've always been stuck around. We're always at these tournaments for, like, three years. It's still a pretty long time in terms of FGC standards. We're still here.
We ain't going nowhere. We, right? we have not dwindled. We have. We are a very vocal. We are very few, but we are a very vocal few. We will always be around. We are not going anywhere else. Right. In fact, you also see people picking up other things too. You see a lot of Pokemon players picking up Tekken too. Yeah. So it's like we're going to keep around because we're going for these Tekken events. So we'll see Pokemon around too. And now we got Euclase versus Dula. Our winners finals. One of these people. Uh, both these people. Guaranteed in the medal slot, the money slot. Sundula, can he take a second first place medal? Look, I will say this actually before we go to the next match. I kind of told people two years ago that they should start playing Tekken, and look at them now. Just saying. I planted that seed. I planted that seed. I mean, seed. the other one I play is Guilty Gear, but. All right, let's see how this goes. We got Sceptile and Asia Slash going in. Just raw uh, walk up CA. Putting it in on Euclase. Sundula with this knowledge here. Holding a CA a little too long in this part, but you kind of have to against the character. You're like, Asia Slash going oh, for yeah. this connection. Sundula's heart is still blazing right now. It is, oh. it is blazing, but is he Ultra Flame? Not yet. Once he gets the double buffs, maybe he will. All right, putting down the Bullet Seed. Trying to catch him I, with the King Shield. I like he's trying to catch with the Flash Kick, but he has to be very late with that. I think a Leaf Blade might have been a little better of an attempt. Being just outside of it, but it does, in fact, kind of... Here's the cat. Oh, we got pick up. Ooh. Ooh, no second pick up on this one. Unfortunately, not sharp anymore. This man, Dull, Dull's a stick. Nice. Damn. You play completely turning that around. Sundula started this match off with a pure aggressive play style. Yuclay's able to uh, take advantage of this character right now. Oh! oh my goodness. I can't believe this man just decided to just open the growth in his face. Yeah, it, it, it caught him off guard a little bit, but Yuclay's still able to uh, capitalize even off of that. King Shield putting If he just CA'd slightly longer, it would have counter pierced the King Shield and he would have been in a much more bueno situation. But now, oh my god, the Dragonite actually going to do a ton of shield damage off this man. Uh, try to hit him with that backhand. Burst, burst activation to match few places right now. Sliding the DMs, waiting for the, the action. But he didn't attack. This is going to go ahead for a connection. All right, so Euclid's the Ferrero Rocher is going to split in half and open up the nice creamy Nutella center. Will it kill them? And is he dead? Nah. Yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, as good as the character is, the burst uh, doesn't do that much damage. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> the character needs some sort of, like, curbing. Right. Ooh. That's going to be it, though. You play stocking out the first game in the easy 2-0. Well, I wouldn't say it was easy. You still kind of had to work. So this is winner final, so this should be a 3 out of 5. It is indeed. Yeah. So you play again, putting up the first the first match right now, Sundula thinking to himself, what do I have to do to overcome this sword and shield Pokemon? Shout out to the new sword and shield. Of course. Sword and shield. <laughs> I literally have to just beat Leon. And I'm waiting to do that on my stream, by the way. That's why I haven't played. You're going to love it. It's a very, it actually is a very difficult fight. Even It is, because like, I've lost twice already. <laughs> on like, stream. It's like, documented. I'm even like a couple levels above him, but I took three attempts at it. Oh, yeah. I'm for real. Yeah. All right, so right back into this match right now. Sundula, of course, sticking with uh, Sceptile, but switching to Diglett. So let's see if this uh, works out a little bit better I for him. I haven't seen Diglett support in so long. Oh, yeah. I want to see how this actually works. Oh, my. Oh, okay. I can't believe this man just jumped over and grabbed. Actually, I, I can 100% grab. It's, it's Dula. I can believe it. Don't. <laughs> I'm going to front. Oh, man. Grab. The, the grab punished the grab. The hater gets grabbed back, quote. All right, Sierra missed on the board. Oh, keeping them steady. Backing off on the King Shield. He was kind of forced to go ahead and do the situation. Nice. Ooh, the Leap Blade into the Giga Drain. Yeah. Steal some meter, steal some health. Try to catch him with the Leaf Blade at the end there. Trying to jump over. Neutral jump. Yeah, oh! Combo. <laughs> combo breaker. Nice. Here comes the Razor, the Razor Leaf. King Shield back and off. See, that's what he was looking for. Yes. And the thing is, is that because the it was it was activated before, and the King Shield, uh, rather the the leaves were activated, they kept being around as the projectile. I like that coverage, but Miss Magic is still course, there. Yep, covering you, Clay, so he could set up this mist right now. I'm surprised he just didn't go right in the burst in that situation on the grab. Oh, but that's it. Yes, very good stuff. The Sun Duel. Sun Duel can definitely do this. Taking off around of you, Clay. Kind of making us forget how convincingly you place took the first match from Sundula. If he keeps this up, this is going to be really good for Sundula. 
Yeah, you gotta be very again with that that slash, that last one, that last big one. You can in fact grab that one or do some other eleven frame to punish it. Wow. Uh, Ant Y does not care. Tor, we got our, our best Tatsu, especially <laughs> especially with the when you have the missed out. Then it's almost, oh, almost unpunchable. the empty hop right into the jab combo. Really good stuff. Flash kick again. Wow. Just out of range of that. I'm actually surprised. They usually yeah. never out of range. Uh, uh. Yes, sir. The defense debuff is actually really bad for Trade Slash. <laughs> Yay! Getting that crit grab. Putting him up against the walls is not a good position for Sundula. Forced to pop burst. Here comes Miss Magius. The mix is a grab. Oh. Okay. Burst. What's the mix? Can see Diggle Dig, Diggle Dig? That's mm, unfortunate. He was looking for that with the 5x. Because the kind of movement that HSF has after 5x is absurd. These uh, this attack that goes forward that can be dashed in and out of with very little end lag is absurd. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of do all these and even just cancel in the burst halfway through it. Uh -oh. Did you just perfect block grab that? I, I, I think so. <laughs> Gets in and out. Got the Miss Magis ready. What's the mix? Oh, okay. Avoids it. Hangs like Spider-Man, but still gets caught. He doesn't quite have the Spidey sense yet, but he says he's got the powers. Right. So Diglett goes under Miss Magis. Miss Magis catches Sundula. Euclid is still in a good position. Has that attack buff right now. Sundula, ah, man, trying to avoid all of these uh, advances from Euclid. He thinks he has a high ground, but unfortunately, Euclid has the pressure on the low ground. All right, so Euclid has 2-0 advantage right now. All he needs to do is one more, and he's sitting pretty in Grand Finals. Now, this is something that Euclid is no stranger to. He's been in a lot of Grand Finals positions at many other events throughout the year. But Sundula, uh, of course, no stranger to being in top eights uh, at all, actually. So... You know, these both of these guys are uh, are where they should be, I would say. So the thing also about the know about you place is you you place even though as great as a player as he is, his stamina and like top like mentality is actually not as high as you think it was. Like back during uh, last uh, or sorry, two NEC years ago or like um, I know Wing Tide was also here and during that long set, um, you it was like a long ten game set and like you place essentially like lost steam. Uh, at the end of it. It's just one of those things that even though he's such an impressive player, this team still does end, but Sundula has a lot more stamina as a player, but I don't know if he can outlast this and make this last all five games, make you plays burn as much fuel as he can before it just runs out of steam and you, your Sundula can take advantage of that. Backs off the bullet seed, or leaf seed. Oh, nice grab. Getting you, Clays. Has to chase him down right now. Meets him at the wall. Nice grab from Sundula. No fear. Making it pretty even right now. Trying to catch him. Oh, oh, that could have been dangerous. <gasps> oh my goodness. He, he knew exactly that he was out of range. He could have waited for a second, got the punish on the landing because he was just out of range. Didn't even get the block on it. Okay, did this man just go ahead and 8x and shield for him to get over that? I think he did. He did. Oh man, I can't the believe all these things. That's going to be it for Sun. For, for you play Sundula taking that round off of the jump. JX disappearing like the ninja, reappearing. Like the ninja. <laughs> All right, Sundula with the first round of this of this match. He's going to definitely need this. This is definitely important for Sundula's uh, winner side career right now. 100% yeah, I expect Sundula next round is just walk up grab. Because every time he's walking up, um, he plays always goes for either C or King Shield. I really expect to just walk up next time. I just like, let's go. Because that's, that's the kind of player Sundula really is. <laughs> like, he'll just go ahead and, like, oh, is this the opening? Is this a pattern? Let me just expose it. Ooh, I like the dash in. Looking very sexy, setting up the lead seeds. I love these like build a bear combos that like you, <laughs> your Sundula has, or rather Septala has. They can just sort of like customize it, whatever you want. Each one has their own unique vibe to it, and it's just like again, like building your own custom. Good you know, combo coverage. System. Okay, you plays getting that hit confirm into burst attack. But it is definitely a little bit scale and doesn't do quite a lot of damage as you expect. But Sundula has a massive health lead. He still hasn't. Did he um, uh, activate burst already? I don't think so. It doesn't hey, no matter. Oh yeah. my good crack from the homing. He's got Diglett on deck. He's gonna go for the pressure. He is. 
Deacon Man. And oh, he doesn't wow. care. We got oppressive grab range. Who cares? Miss but now we got Miss Magius, but that's not going to happen just yet. That kid, he just got the comeback with the fury. My guy, he literally just stole that whole match. That whole round, I should say. Excuse me. That's wild. You play sitting on match point right now. All he needs is this round to advance the grand finals. Sandula will then go down to the losers finals to meet the winner of Oreo and Roxo. That's if, if you play to match to clutch this out. Sandula, no sleeper, cannot sleep on Sandula. Definitely has it in him, has what it takes to beat you, Clays. Taking off rounds, breaking the shield though. Uh, no, no leaf blade from uh, Dula or even a side homing to get out of that situation. We're done. Getting out of that situation, he's just getting hit by Miss Magis once, but unfortunately that is going to be it for Sun Duel. You play taking this 3-0, locking his spot into winner's finals. He gets a nice break to regain that you know, stamina that you place yeah. has. If you had to make the losers run, I don't think he would have been able to sustain the whole way. Yeah, yeah. But up next, I mean, hey, like, this, like I said, the show must go on. We are going to be in for a treat, guys. We haven't seen this in quite some time. And you know what's funny? Back during this time, it was like one of those things that I have to admit, players were very tired of seeing. But since we haven't seen it in a while, you could call this nostalgia, if you will. But hey, nostalgia works. We see a lot of remakes with a lot of different games happening. Right now, guys, get ready. We are in for a treat, a classic, if you will, Oreo versus Roxo. Like this used to be the finals of like our bi-monthly or monthly of all the time of Roxo, um, Oreo, Roxo, Oreo. And now we're finally back to seeing that again. But only one of these people will make it to third place. Only one of these people will see a medal, and that's heartbreaking. It Both is these heartbreaking. people work so hard at this game. Yeah. You can see that they're just chatting back and forth. They're not like there's not there's no animosity, there's no like you know, cockiness. And you see Roxo smiling, like he you know, like he's probably feeling the nostalgia too, you know? He's like, Oh, this feels good. Yeah, so is that Sam show in the background? Uh yes it is. Yes, it's definitely Sam's show. Yeah, see, uh, nostalgia. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. right, back to Sam's show. Yeah. Now I'm ready, man. I'm definitely ready to see to see this. And you can you can you can see the 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 good the good friendship, the good uh, sportsmanship. In fact, we were also all in the same room together. Like we were all like oh, yeah. that's the kind of like friends that we are, and we're all now in um, uh, you know, we see these two in top four. Roxo has way too many charms in his controller. Like that's all from like the plug. <laughs> Look at that. Just a Dude, it's gonna weigh down that that poor wire. Most players, get, of course, getting ready right now. Roxo has the wire, but in fact, he plays on pro pad. <laughs> he plays both. You know, like when when he has to prepare for like worlds and stuff, he just plays on Pokémon pad because that is one of the official rules that all players must play with an official Hori Pokémon tournament controller you know to give i guess you know to give the game its classic arcade feel shout out to the arcade by the way the arcade version i know a lot of you guys uh may not have ever had that opportunity to play that arcade version in said arcades but for someone like me that definitely had that opportunity i can tell you guys it was awesome i'm glad that we have it on the switch though oh yeah that for sure Dream come true. It's, 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 it's what we wanted. It's what we wanted as soon as I remember back in the day we used to, we, when they first announced that there was there's gonna be uh, new characters for the arcade version. We were calling those the DLC. Oh, that's right. And then I was like, yeah, it's a DLC, but it's a whole new game. Yeah. Gotta download the whole game. Yep. And then we got our other DLC characters. We had Aegislash, we had Blastoise, and we had. That's it. That's right. <laughs> we didn't have the supports. The new supports, but yeah, that was, those are the last new characters that we've seen in this game. All right, so again, here we go with the classic run back. Mewtwo versus Garchomp. This is something that we have seen time and time again, but this is, in a way, fresh, refreshing to see it on our screens once again. He tried using his CA to counter the earthquake coming out, but Roxo doing the classic patented charge to Sand Tomb, but in fact cancel it into something else like the jump and drill, trying to punish any sort of attempt to try to punish the crab attempt. And the forward Y saying, I don't care about your charging CA. I don't care it's going to break shields. I don't care it's going to break CAs. I'm just going to go ahead and attack. Oh, uh. no. Waited a little too long. Gets the crit attack on that. But it's not going to be enough to kill Oreo at this point, but enough to put him into field phase. Got the uh, Frogadier. Going to put him in the corner. What's the mix up here? Going to wait it out. Oreo with the homing attempt. Nice counter attack from Roxo. Roxo convincingly taking that first round. Not taking too much damage uh, off his life meter right here. 
both getting right back into it. Ooh, or what was that stone edge? And got Jenny out of the last second. Wow. Both players just whiffing everything. Yeah, With the man. homing attack, the Mewtwo, 100% privileged homing attack getting through all of that. He said privileged. The double trouble right there. Here comes Roxo with this aggressiveness. Ooh, capes Ooh. him in the corner. What's the go ahead? Oh! Right for the sand. So you thought it was too obvious, but he did it. <laughs> he did it. That was sick. Roxo completely changing his game. Oreo not having it. Opening him up with a homing attack. He said, yo, I can hit the grab button too. Putting him Fire spin. right against C the wall. Oh, no CA. Decides to push him back a little bit. I appreciate that. He's going to go ahead. Oh, that is not punishable like that. Let's see what the punished reaction from Oreo is. Nothing. All right, we're going to stay neutral. Here comes Snivy. That's fine. That's fine. Frogadier going to go. Yeah, but the first ones are eaten by the leaves. <laughs> village in the leaves being the village hit in the mist. 100%. Roxo straight up went into that. Oh, my. That is a full. That actually might be enough. Oh, no. The Drops it. The <laughs> but that that's going to be a good exchange, though. So the fact the exhaust frames after the burst, saving Oreo once. But unfortunately, the swords aren't going to win that exchange that time from Oreo and yeah. uh, Roxo taking out game one. That last hit that Roxo uh, ran into and like just tripped it. Look, you ever run into like a screen door? <laughs> that's it. That's what I the worst part is I've done that before and after hitting it, I froze and like the screen door, it didn't break the screen door, it popped out of its socket. Yeah. So it's like, uh oh. <laughs> I've seen. And I see, I've seen I stand there astonished. So all right, but you know what's also heartbreaking? This is this is not even like a loser's finals. Like we're not even going to see a three semis. out of five. This is a two out of three, guys. And nice great grab. And Oreo's movement allowing him to get in a position, move forward, and get the grab off of the stone edge. One of Oreo's patented things is just his normal neutral movement. If you go to punish and get these little grab punishes or hits or whiff punishes, that's his thing here. Breaking him right down, keeping him. Oh wait, no, gets the wall splat instead. Rare, like, it's actually very rare from you two to actually get the wall spots on things. Oh, okay, Rocco getting a hit in. Oreo still opening him up with the advantage and the life lead right now. Has Snivy. Try to catch him with the Stone Edge read. Oreo bringing it down with that Ooh, dive punch. Oh, catching over another J JRY. The, the, rather, for those of you who don't know, Mewtwo is um, R in the field, which is or, or R in the air, which is, in fact, shield, is like an air dash. Yes, sir. You go ahead and kind of cut it short with, like, holding back or holding it down. And then you can use your, your JY, the giant like sphere balls around him. It's fantastic. It is an amazing hitbox. It, it is like some you know vanilla Marvel 3 Tron hitbox of like just covers <laughs> everything you need it to. Ooh, switching sides right there. Rock so going for the grab. Putting him up towards against the wall right now. Going for the sandstorm and oh, bringing the beats house him down to with the that. ground. He goes, <laughs> hey, yes. with the earthquake. Ooh, watch your feet. Ain't got no socks on, it's cold. Right. He read the cancel out of and caught him with the 8Y, catching the anti-air, full comboing, putting the setup here. That setup is actually fake. Oh. Uh, the, the side Y, you can use your extended state upon waking up, where if you press no buttons, you have slightly more invincibility. The fraud. If you, if you extended state, you don't have to block anywhere. It's literally fake. Here comes the damage from Roxo right now, putting Oreo up against the wall. Getting the full damage, the wall splat, 134 is what Oreo is down to now. Here comes Frogadier, Oreo forced the whole block, but here comes Snivy trying to catch. Uh, oh, gets gets uh, Roxo right at the end. Oreo able to capitalize with that homing attack, putting up against the and wall. he just goes for the Dragon Whoa! Rush, but Oreo just went ahead with the sword. That, he tried Burst. it right again. The classic Oreo, 100% JY oh grab. What's going to happen here? He tries oh. going, he goes, dunks him out. And the back dash is that gonna connect it? Yes, yes, it does. Roxo putting a round up in this match. Oreo to one one. This is Roxo's game right here. One more round for him to move on to see Sundula in the losers finals. Oreo, Oreo, does he have it in him to the bring it to America's game number three? Favorite cookie. <laughs> Fully committed, put the ring on That's not a bad situation for Oreo. He had no meter to lose from the shield break. It didn't really matter. It didn't give him the frame advantage that really Roxo needed. And in fact, he technically sort of won the first exchange. At if I should up a cup. Shout out to uh, Deadly. Oh, yeah. Thank you. See, I love you, Shippo. You understand all my references. <laughs> I play fighting games. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Here we go. Has Snivy ready. Trying to keep that pressure on, but goes for the grab. Ready. Just goes for it. Yeah, just goes for it, man. But Roxo does have burst, and that is something Oreo.
way. And that might be the, the unfortunately, this is the disadvantage here. Burning Frogadier is going to allow Roxo a free way to get in. He goes for it. That is actually a very smart way here. Wow. And that might actually take it from that. I actually didn't think that would reach. Is this going to be enough? I mean, it, it might be enough. It's probably enough. It's enough. Wow. And just Ro like that, Roxo putting Oreo away. But hey, man, you got to give it to Oreo, man. Without any kind of practice, he literally was in the area, flown out to see family for Thanksgiving weekend. And he said, hey, I might as well come out for this event. And look at that. Fourth place. That's a very respectable place. I mean, just shy of, of medals, unfortunately. That's the uh, tier there. <laughs> But, you know, great stuff from both of these players. And now Roxo's got to fight Sundula in our Losers Finals. We are now in our final three. This is now all the money, where all the money's had. This is for the medals. This is for everything at this point. Now, before we go into our Losers Finals, guys, I do have a special announcement that I do have. Thanks you to Funky P for allowing us to uh, share this with you guys on the stream. And again, shout out to Roxo for giving me the green light to uh, announce this. Destiny 2 is happening late October 2020. And that's all I can say. Destiny so, 2. That's, look forward to it. We're going to have a lot more info coming you guys' way. But I hope you guys are hyping the chat right now. Spread it out. Hashtag Destiny 2. It is a thing. It is happening. And Roxo did want me to let you guys know right before the Losers Finals. So uh, I don't know if he... Okay, no. He's getting set up. He's not. He probably forgot that he told me to, to tell you guys. But it is happening, okay? So uh, it looks like Oreo's actually. Uh, I think he might be piecing out actually, because uh, trying oh, to beat back yeah. the, the storm that's coming out. Apparently, 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 I, there's gonna be a storm that's coming. But I'm looking out this this big window that we have in front of us right now, and I, I actually don't see. By the way, anything. Destiny Two was probably the worst kept secret, <laughs> all of Roxo's secrets. Oh really? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, no, not from like the chat, just like in general. <laughs> like like Why? All, like all of Tri-State do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, that, that's his own fault. I know. I kept my mouth shut. All right? I kept my mouth shut. I freaking was like, dude, what are you doing telling everybody right now? I, I got to see you're going to tell it, and then everyone just tells it anyway. Yeah. All right, here we go. Losers Finals. This is a three out of five. Sun Duel versus Roxo. This is the Tri Attack. Or, I'm sorry. This is the Tri State region right here. Oh, we got Sun Duel from Jersey, Roxo from New York, and Duclase from Connecticut. That's that is right. legit the true Tri State here. The big three. Oh, ooh, okay. Big three. Yeah, it definitely is, actually. Ooh, going in for the grab right now. Starting us off hot right now. Roxo in the driver's seat. Trying to apply this pressure. Ooh, Avoiding I like poison. That. I oh, like yeah. that to getting out of here. Poison not very effective against ground types. Decides to go ahead, dig Ugh. right underneath it. Right. Getting that uh, defense debuff right now on Roxo. Oh, oh, oh. I, that was, I like that. I can't believe this man just challenged the anti air C attack with an aerial attack. What, what is going through your mind to think that? A very good drill the, is what? Yeah, the <laughs> timing and that, you know, you know, that that will of fighting. The fire in Roxo, dude. He, he, look, look, he knows his characters. These projectile pressures with, like, Garchomp is ridiculous. And the dig getting through that flash kick, because unfortunately, flash kick's a projectile. I, I think Sundula was anticipating Roxo to kind of psych out and not commit to the dig completely, why? and that's why he did it. The health lead that Roxo had, why shouldn't he? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> like, like, 100%, you can make those kinds of decisions in these risk rewards. Hey, man, at the end of the day, it's all about decision makings in these fighting games. You never know what will come your way. Each player plays differently. Everyone has a play style. And right now, Roxo, again, with the aggressive play, showing up. Keep, oh, wait a minute. Are we going to see a grab? Oh, my goodness. Right, Matt, he did it again. It. Call it. Yo, you want to call that double dipping? Because we he, he had it on Oreo. Now oh, he's you're giving it to at this point. Why, why aren't you here up on the top three with all his oh, predictions? Oh, please stop. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about myself in this game. Anyway, Roxo closing out the first match convincingly that, against perfect, Sundula. by the way. Perfect. Oh, my God. You win. Sundula going to have to rethink this right now. Instead, going right into it. Not wasting any time at all. Got the crowd behind Dula. I heard someone uh, say, go Dula. I don't know if you guys heard that. All right, so here we go. So I like what Roxo did. Walking into those leaves is actually how you counter it. Uh, either hitting um, uh, Seth Powell. I forgot his name for a half second. <laughs> <Hey, yo>. <laughs> <laughs> I got a Either hitting him, making him to like hit, block an attack, or hitting the leaves, like either with yourself or attack, gets rid of them. Right. So if you just, you know, the leaves don't actually have any hits done. They do some damage, but not a lot. Um, like, four. So if you physically just smash your face into those leaves, like, you know, you see like a pile of leaves and you're young and a kid, and you just jump into it, do it. 
before they wow. come back dangerous. Look, look at that homing in the air, the air homing. He went all the way up there, looking like he was from the Globe Trotters, real quick. Roxo not really taking too much damage right now, and closing out the first round of this game number two. Roxo is making a smoothie out of him, putting him with his blender with the strawberries, bananas, making a nice strawberry banana smoothie. Oof, Man, don't I want one. Don't I really want one. Chippo, please, I want one right now. <laughs> Luckily, there's a place nearby that does have one. Oh, we're going. Well, I got caught. Come to smash after. So. Anyway, going right into this next overhead, this, overhead, this third next overhead. series. But Dun Sundula getting a footing in. Unfortunately, not finishing that combo. Gets the anti air CA finally. Yeah, Putting up. this trap down, getting this man just getting a second trap in the attack buff. Ooh, I like that. Getting the pick up with the uh, 5Y. Yeah, that, that missed timing from before it cost Roxo right now, but he got the Frogadier coverage right now. Not the greatest insurance, but an insurance policy at, at the least. Here goes the boomerangs. You know, it's crazy. Garchomp is such an in-your-face character, but he has a lot of other tools, and especially in field phase, that, you know, he could zone if he really wanted to. He, he can he can zone non-zoners, which is actually you know, weird, because Sceptile can zone too, so this is weird that he's essentially out-zoning. It's because of like, the meatiness of those projectiles, Ooh. and the dash and grab, not expecting him to do it with one on the board. Yep, made Roxo answer that DM right there when, after that slide-in. So Sundula not making this completely free, putting a round up on the scoreboard right now. Frogadier gonna start Yeet Blade to cancel that. Another one. Another, Another one. one. Oh! But Roxo was none of that. CA into the overhead, putting the pressure down, putting them on the wall, get the bounce, get the extra 30. Yeah, took the risk. Nice. There we go. Sudden Duel recognizing can go ahead and JX that. Catching with the Giga Drain, because as soon as the Giga Drains, the hitbox of those um, uh, seeds are gone. Like that. <gasps> the Boy. crit! Wow! It's crit! That damage was ridiculous! We'll never get old. I, it will never get old. We'll see these characters for years putting up this kind of damage. He's not done yet. Oh no, oh, missing the 5Y it. off of it, giving Sunduel a chance to react with burst. <gasps> oh, caught! But you, you thought. Yeah. You thought. Uh! Is that enough for it? No, it is not. That grab doesn't do quite a lot of damage, and it's just enough for Duel with one. Duel can tend to close this out with one exchange and then burst. Like, look at that. If he gets a raw burst now, it's over. It is. Uh oh. And that's the Mismagis. Gonna go ahead forward, get the attack for, buff. Just for safe measure right now. <gasps> Ooh. Good jump. Oh, oh, oh. Yup. Roxo's gotta be very patient. Careful. Very good. I like this. Not overcommitting to everything. He is just at the right amount of distance to avoid the uh, the long distance grab. He's gonna be very careful. Sunduel has to do so much. You have eight seconds on the clock. Can Sunduel, and like for the, how long the combos of Sceptile are, it's almost impossible for Sunduel to get back from that deficit anyway, unless he gets like a raw leaf storm. I get. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta say that I gotta give credit to where the, where the credit is due, man. Roxo's game play has improved immensely over the years. I remember he was just super aggro and would just keep hitting those buttons and trying to get you to break. But now this man is zenned in. He He'll is wait going for you to break yourself. Yeah, he's going for grabs. And that's something that I, I told him a very long time. I'm like, dude, you need to grab more. And here we are in 2019, NEC 20 on Funky Pizzle, all right? He is implementing all of those uh, different types of mechanics and play styles to his gameplay. And, that, and that obviously right now, I mean, he's sitting pretty 2-0 over Sundula. Sundula finally gave him momentum he needs to get into um, uh, dual phase, getting that grab off of the failed um, uh, Stone Edge attempt. Yeah. Ooh, 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 okay, right underneath but Sundula. But not quite a punish from that one, even though he did have the advantage to do so. Roxa didn't quite get the correct hit off it. But he's going to go ahead with the double, with the kick punch, putting him on the wall. Yeah, this pressure, man. Ta yo, having to hold the pressure from a Garchomp is probably one of the most aggravating things next to like a Shadow Mewtwo pressure. It is. I mean, it's like a full blender again. Like again, making the smoothie, putting you in. <laughs> putting, the thing is, it puts you for the knockdown, but it's a literal like twisting of attacks. You know, from the drill, to the sand tomb to the stone edge, just twist everywhere. This character's a torpedo. Right. I mean, that's literally his design. It, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Wow. Like, look at that. that. Torpedo. Looked like they had a couple of iframes at the startup on that. And unfortunately, he didn't have the attack afterward. But Sundula gained the attack in. But look at this kind of timing he needs to finish this off. Yeah, Sundula picking up on the, the grab mix ups that Roxo is throwing at him right now. We got Razor Leaf, a Miss Magius, and a burst. 
Is he far enough away? He is. Yo, he tried to grab him. Oh my god, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. He needs to not. He needs to just run away. Run away. Oh my goodness, he did. Yo, he, oh, the the raw dragon rush caught the backdash. The smirk oh on this guy. My. Rocks. Is he a villain or is he the anti-hero? He ran away, but did it such a way that got him attacked. Sundula now catching him again, stealing the meter that he needs, putting him on the wall, Gain peeling him off. It's nice catch. Sundula trying to make up for what just was stolen from him just now. Honestly, I saw some vibes of me in there. Like the time's on the clock, you run for a break scene, you just do a raw enhanced flamethrower, and they just lose 250. That's exactly what happened. And you know kind what? Of last seconds on the clock. Yeah. <gasps> oh, the man. Grab crit. Gonna go full animation. You get the follow up off of this. Yup. Up against the wall. All right, he still has opportunity to continue this pressure. He's not done yet. Oh, man, this is not good for Sundula. Down to 28 life HP. Frogadier going to uh, continue this shield pressure right now. Here comes the burst activation. Roxo is playing no games. Good, perfect block from Sundula, but that, unfortunately, isn't going to be enough. Roxo advances 3-0 over Sundula to go and meet Euclid's for what is now our ongoing and uncurrent rivalry that we've seen in many different events. We've seen this at Tri-Attack, we've seen that at my own Catch Me Inside series, and here we are on a major level here at NEC 20, Roxo versus Euclid in Grand Finals. Oh my god, it couldn't have been written any other way. I mean, we saw what was in the bracket originally. Like, you know, on the bracket we saw um, Thanks Well, we thought that was gonna be some sort of finals going on, but unfortunately he didn't make it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we saw, um, we saw, oh, we saw Oreo, we saw Roxo, we saw Flegger, even going in Flegger drowned in pools. That was someone who's expected to be top three. Yeah. So like it just sort of threw everyone for a spin, but the fact that Roxo and Euclid were still able to make it even after what happened, what was going on, that it's still there. Yeah. Wait, were they in the same pool? No, they weren't. Well, so I think uh, Oreo is actually leaving right now, so that's what I was uh, waving out to. Yeah, before. a lot of the, a couple of players are trying to kind of beat the storm. Uh, it is going to be supposed to snowstorm. Not around here, but more towards back home in like Jersey, like North Jersey, New York, where half of these you know players are. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. It's, <laughs> how long did it take you to get out here? Three and a half. I was. Oof, I was a uh, two and a half. Two, two, two forty-five. You're by Stroudsburg, right? Well, no. Well, my where I live, I'm only like half an hour from Stroudsburg. Oh, like in Jersey. Oh, I didn't, actually didn't know you were in Jersey. But I was, I was out at families for Thanksgiving. I, we always stay over. Um, after we have our festive eating and shenanigan Mario Party games and whatnot, um, um, how did Chance Time ruin any uh, anyone's night? Nah, okay. nah. We're, it, at the end of the day, we're still family. You I know. know, but being Chance Time happens, and that ruins family. Oh yeah, Ch I, I, Chance Time is like blue shell. Like, it, it, just, it, just it, <laughs> if Mario Party is definitely a, one of those games that ruins a lot of types of relationships for sure. You want it more? Again, that ruins a relationship more. Uh, Dokopan Kingdom is definitely something that will ruin lives. Really? It's like I think of it like. Mario Party oh. but with like oh. oh wait a minute throw in the shade early okay okay Rock was like nah 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 we're not having that he's gonna repay that debt within these matches I'm sure now of course Euclid's represent Aegis Slash Rock's obviously gonna go with the, our, our resident Sharpedo Pokemon Garchomp he, they, they know each other very well they know the matchup, and Roxo has recently been taking, you know, victories over Euclid. Actually, as a matter of fact, as of last week at CMI 22, Roxo defeated Euclid, becoming an, our current Pokémon World Champion. Stealing it out, and he goes for the seat immediately. Euclid says, I don't care, give me that, gonna go for the grab. Gets the shield push forward, going for this iron head setup, and again, putting this pressure, but Roxo just wants none of it. Patience. Oh my uh, goodness, gets the crit. Hammerhead. Yep. Catching to the side. Uh huh. Yes, so sir. the hammerhead head is actually a really cool way to not only start out um, like the combo and kind of keep them in the air longer, but it also activates the X button you need to press so that you can go ahead and release X after the combo. So it's sort of like a, a, a double hit there for what you're doing to negative edge after. All right, going in with the Iron Head right now. You place on the offensive. Roxo taking advantage of those iframes on the startup of that drill. Here comes the Mismagius. Nyx 
which is AKA a grab excuse. Oh, Just the camera tech slid right underneath Euclid's. We're needing a new Magma at this point. You're, you're fired, you're done, you can't Man. keep up. He said over here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Starting to fuss with these boomerangs. Ooh, cut out, but unfortunately Ninetales being used defensively in this situation. He tries to block and go for the grab, not quite getting it. Roxo grabs back, putting the pressure he needs. Has this full meter and... Ooh, nice cut. dive look at that. kick! Look at, that. Look, at that. look at that ground bounce dive kick, able to convert off of this. But unfortunately Aegis Slash's poor shape did not allow the catch on this one. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a, a odd Pokemon, especially if it's literally a I sword to, and a shield. I supposed to juggle a sword. You're, yeah. Especially when it's sharp. Well, now it's sharp. Well, not anymore. It's actually no longer sharp. They lost the buff. Now, now it, is. it is. Okay. Here we go. Everyone likes to call that move V Create, even though it's not. It's just I call it just V for Victory. Oh, okay. V for Victory it is. Sierra Miss on the field right now. Backs off at the other end. Roxo playing, uh, slowing down his momentum right now. Bringing down the Earthquake. Making this combo work. A 9 on the Richter scale. This man just got wasted. Uh, sand attack. Getting the iframes right there. Does you place you place moving forward, advancing, and closing out the round. You place is yo, he's here to play too, man. He's not gonna go down easy. Goes ahead, starts with his benches almost immediately in the set. Gonna put pressure on win that first phase. Clay's trying to jump over that and realizes that he wants to make sure he places doesn't have the meter he has like right now because now Rox is in the corner. It's not a, good, not a fun look. Oh, see go. again, that dive kick's so good, allowing him to stall in the air for the time he needs. And already half of your synergy is gone from that exchange. All right, trying to run away. Nice counter attack by you, Clay's. Trying to keep him in the corner right now. The iframe trying to trip him on, on the feet, even though he don't have any. Oh, that no. That is some damage. The enhanced sharp grab will go ahead and put the pressure he needs. We're putting the flash cannon as the Oki set up, getting that free chip damage. Yeah, man. I was just about to say that. That, that is definitely a factor in this matchup. Even if you're not putting the raw damage, chip damage is damage nonetheless. Here comes Magic still on the ground. That yes. was such a good mismatch. The whole time just kept it juggling on. It's like... Like the slow-moving sonic boom from Guile that you walk forward with it. Like, yeah, it's it's my it's my shield. It's my insurance policy. Oh yeah, it yo, I'm, I gotta say, Nine Tails Miss Magic is definitely a very good support type for again against uh, Aegis Slash. But you place getting the first game, and and Roxa, you know, he's shrugging it off. He's like, okay, okay, it's whatever. He, he's shaking his head. Shaking his head because, you know, of course, you know, the character, I'm not going to lie, this is the general consensus that it, it, you, he just has the BS character, to, to say the, the least. The Put character it blunt. a lot of privilege on damage and moves and He just has his privilege. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I can agree with that. Ooh! I told you, in order to beat you, Clay, just walk forward, grab. He'll always do a situation where that's beaten, either by going to King Shield or going for... Uh, Yay. Assert the dominance, flex the chest, and the parry, Ooh. the first one of the day. Oh, that was jazzy. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. No, not fully charged, not quite getting it, but not crit either. So Rox doesn't get a full bit. He still does get a combo, but not quite as much. Yep. Oh, okay. that is actually nice. If he's not sharpened this 4Y. Oh, oh that's, no. that's a bit of damage. Hey, you place. Open him up right now, bring him into the uh, field phase right now. Flash cannon for the chip damage. And what the a, reach! What a clash of attacks. That fin is so long and longer than we realize. The extra distance. Uh, uh. Putting the pressure on the hit. On, oh, parried it. Real. Again, you punish that move at the startup, not at the end. On the end, it's not punishable. Um, but at the startup where he's like kind of lifting up, you can sort of stuff him out, even with the crab. But at that time, I think Roxa would have probably done the, the jet upper or the 8Y, done the launcher, and I hadn't get a free hit out. Ooh, man, keeping the mist out and strong. That was fantastic because that would have broken, I think that would have broken shield uh, yeah. at that point. Oh, okay, good nine tails, avoiding the grab right now. Trying to open him up. I like that a lot from Roxo, changing into a different nice. move so it doesn't actually give him the uh, crit if it did connect. Because the uncrit version of that CA does almost nothing. Oh, 
Nice, okay, good counter attack by you, Clay. getting that attack buff. Roxo forced to activate his burst, catching him out of the air. No combo conversion from you, Clay. Also, to avoid any kind of mishap, activates burst, going back and forth, trying and to juke out Roxo. Listen. What? I, I lied about the connection, but I think he's just gonna have four five. Here's burst. I think that's actually it. This is Euclid's game too. From that, that's unfortunate because that Dragon Claw is supposed to go right into uh, burst. Like that's a guaranteed combo. Wow. Rosso stepping back right now. Look at it, look at his face. <laughs> Yo, this man is definitely like the definition of bra. Like right now, look at that. Definitely gonna have to. Sit, chill, chill back. Don't hit rematch. Go back to character selection screen. There Thank we go. You. I heard it. But you place almost getting this clean 2-0 on Roxo. Roxo showing us what's you know what's good, but maybe Roxo's also losing a bit of steam. He did in fact play losers semis and losers finals back to back. Yeah, I I mean right now, you know you gotta stay cool, calm, collected. You know, you got to find your comfort zone right now. You definitely have to reevaluate the scenario, especially since Euclid has convincingly taking, taken two games. Again, shout-outs to the Gumi. Give us the Gumi face in the chat, either colon S or equals S. Look at that face, that adorable little goo, that piece of dragon over there. More dragon than Gyarados will ever be is sitting right there wow, in that chair. That's more dragon wild. than Charizard will ever be wow. right there. Okay, and now. Apple is more dragon than that. Come look All at that. All right, Shippo. Stop with your insults. Stop disrespecting my man Charizard like this. Charizard's been in the limelight too long. Come on. First of all, he's in the limelight for as long as he is because he's the he's the First man. First of all, what, what, what gives you the right? Anyway, we gotta call this match right now. 2-0 right now. You play Ooh, sitting in winners. I love the little poke with the 5X. He's going ahead and bit, getting away from that. Bounces him away. And then just, just keep going for these King Shield hits. This sharp attack going for it. Oh my god, the double 5X. Man, bringing Rocco down to about half life. Less than that at this point right now. Now he's just trying to chip away at it at his HP. Pretty smart. Nice grab. Rox is gonna have to take full advantage of this uh, situation right now. Wow. That, that V is such a good move. It's so quick, and that dash forward grab is gonna not take it. Law by five damage. Can Rox make this absurd comeback, this insano comeback of the gods? Or not, not quite. And you place one round away from taking this whole tournament, taking this three over Roxo. Can Roxo suddenly find the inner strength? Can he challenge that? It, the, can he call upon the inner destiny two announcement for himself? <laughs> or will you place just say, "I'll just win the next one"? Yeah, he did. Win, in fact, win the first one. As I, as anticlimactic as that would be, avoiding oh! <laughs> the flash cannon. All right, here's a start. The dig under the ground. It doesn't ground? Isn't ground super effective in steel? It is actually. Ooh, the jump drill. Wow, look at that raw damage. This is the kind of damage that he's going to need right now. Roxo opening him up. The full aggressiveness is on right now. Oh, just missing that. Oh, catching him, making him spin. The punish from you place. This is going to have to matter for him. 8Y misses that conversion. Locks in and gives him the uppercut. Making him look like a gentleman with that one right there. Roxo I mean, I mean shout out to Dudley, but in fact, that uppercut is 100% Brian Fury. 100, like that oh, was a you're right. bajillion percent Brian Fury. That is 100% Brian Fury, yes. So, 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 ta right. so taunt Jet Upper would be like, what, high stance you know, Jet Upper? Yeah. Here we go. Open up Euclid's right now. Roxo's going to have to go for as much damage as he possibly can, taking full advantage of Euclid's low health meter. But that's, that's it's, you know, it's what he's going to have to do. I love this movement from Roxo going full screen, waiting for, you know, you place the kind of overcommit yes. option. Because even though uh, it is a good field face, he's not good at hitting things that aren't directly in front of him. I mean, like as a, uh, like a line attack. Straightforward. Backs off a little bit, but still, ah, oh, man, he nine did, tails. He did the heavy lot. He thought nine tails would be able to save him, and unfortunately, not quite. All right, flash cannon going to back him off a little bit. Be careful, Umbreon is on deck. Okay, try to. Gonna, I think he's going to mash Umbreon last second. Or first. first. All right. Try to catch him with a dive kick. He's going to be very careful because look at this. Umbreon also on deck, allowing him to make one mistake. Oh, my oh. goodness. No, he knows. Roxo's going to go through. Oh, never mind. I thought Roxo would hit him out of it, but it outlasted. It outlasted the invincibility that Stone Edge gives. That's absurd to think about. 
Yeah, no more resources right now. Bringing down to 38 HP. Bringing down the house. No! And it's there. The dash going grab. Giving the 3 0 from Euclase. That is absurd. I thought I thought Roxo's like Stone Edge would outlast the burst, but yeah. the attack animation is so long on Asia Slash attack from like the spinning swords, it just outlasted it. Yeah. Most of the characters like, you know, Pikachu or Brakeson or Libre would have probably just done their animation and Roxo yeah. would have been able to Stone Edge and hit with the last hitbox and get the crit off of it. Right. Hey man, it's unfortunate Roxo losing the championship again. It's pretty much been going back and forth between Roxo Euclid. I feel like has been a champion, I think, before in the past uh, recent uh, series. But here we are. Congratulations to Euclid, your new Pokémon champion and Give NEC champion. Give us those, uh, you know, Gumi faces in the chat for for Euclid, hundred percent. Those again, colon threes equals three, so colon um, uh, S's equals S's. Look at that Gumi face as he equals that little guy. Yeah, and unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately for Rocco getting second, but hey man, that's nothing to be ashamed of. And uh, congrats to everyone that made the top eight, and thanks to all of those that uh, you know were in the stream watching and all that kind of good stuff. I think even though Roxo lost, he does want to come on and say a few things. I think so, but you know, knowing you and Roxo, I think you'd be doing the things that you want to say with him because I know you guys have that connection between each other. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, but well, I mean, you guys did win, so I mean. If he wants to come on, I'll let him come on with you. But it's all based on what we have on time. It's all funky TV. If, if, it, if for example, we have to just cut the next game, then we have to cut the next game. That's all. True. All his jurisdiction. Right. Okay. So